Yes, well, the most true. famous retro fighting game couple, it is there we go. from Los Angeles. Uh, well, the Los Angeles area, L Trouble and Killer Miller. Thank you guys for joining us. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. It's been a while. <laughs> it has been a while. Who we got here? Who we got here? I know Mike B. What's up, Hollywood? Whoa. No. It's just Mike. You know, simple Mike's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, Mike is, is good. There's not Hollywood in the... Oh my, uh, it's a government issued ID. It's just my. Oh, I got you. I got yeah. you. I got you. Yeah, man. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys... It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, it has been a while. Yeah. It's, it's been, been January, a... I think. Yeah, January. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it hasn't been that long, but I already miss you guys, you know? I, I always, always miss you guys. Like, I feel like you guys roll out the red carpet for us whenever we come to town um, and, and get but together. That's... What's that? That's because you guys reciprocate for us. You roll out the red carpet for us when we go down to Texas. So gladly, at least we could do. <laughs> well, yeah, if anything, we don't do enough for you guys. Whenever you come out here, it's not enough time in the weekend. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. Well, I feel the same way. Like, and we try to roll out the red carpet anytime we have any kind of guests. But like, you, you two are very special to us. You know, even above Aww. and beyond just just a, a normal traveling player or two i mean we're talking about to the best sim in the united states and the best honda in the united states and if you guys disagree with me you're both wrong you are <laughs> i like that confidence i like that confidence chris i don't have that kind of confidence yet, but i'm glad you do i i have confidence in, in declaring well i mean i don't know we we've played casuals quite a bit and like tanya you in particular like I remember because I was jumping up and down celebrating like it was a lifetime achievement. We've played like 300 <laughs> matches or more, and I've beaten you one time ever, even in casuals. <laughs> like, that's how good she is. <laughs> well, me and Eugene have been really lucky because we've traveled the U.S. We've traveled parts of the world, so we've seen kind of like the mountaintop. Mm -hmm. So, like, our, our, you know, our sample of players is, is a little different. So that's why we're like, uh, yeah, not the best pond in the u.s maybe not i think eugene's the best dolls in though but i'm definitely i'd say top i'd say top 300 in the u.s all right I let's like that. let's look at the scoreboard i'm seeing the scoreboard <laughs> right here uh other hondas in the u.s okay i'm seeing a i'm seeing a honda in japan over here this is a kusa mundo mundo kusa Kusamundo. Kusamundo, yes, thank you. So there's that one over there. I don't my, see my any birthday. of them that have three owed this Kusamundo fellow in tournament. <laughs> oh my. Except oh my. there's one over here on the ledger and it's it says Killer already. says Killer Miller right there. And and case closed. The defense rests. Okay, so one mirror match does not indicate the level of a Honda, in my opinion. It's that a is, great moment. That I'm is glad correct. You, love the moment. you beat him three mirror matches in a row. <laughs> Don't play your ego too much. You know? I'm, trying, I'm trying to keep her on if, the humble here. If you're trying to stay humble around me, it's not going to work. I know. L listen hard. to the celebrity over here, Michael Beltran, who still doesn't know why he's a celebrity. Oh my God. <laughs> he is a celebrity. Some people just are what they are, you know? Mm hmm. Uh, let's see, continuing to introduce to anybody who doesn't know who you two are, <laughs> you are indeed the best sim and the best Honda around. You're the first couple of fighting games, retro fighting, whatever. Uh, and you guys carried the banner for Super Turbo Nationwide for years. Run the Evo tournaments, like, for Aww. as much as we've done for Super Turbo, we could not have done it if you hadn't done it before. Oh. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of cyclical that way. Because uh, we held it down for a number of years, but before us, there was guys like Kuropi, who did the S2 Revival stuff for a while. Before that, was Evo guys, and definitely the Small Pockets com communities all over the country that certainly hold Super Turbo tournaments. So I feel like, you know, it was our turn, and we kind of help out still, but we haven't done that as much lately. And now it's definitely your guys' turn, because your free play arcades and the Spring Series and all that has been we can... some of the big time the last few years. If we can just survive all this, because I, 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 we've literally all been laid off. So I am no longer employed by Free Play Arcade. I'm volunteering to do this stream. I'm volunteering to do delivery duty on the weekends. Uh, mm -hmm. We're just doing everything we can to make sure that Free Play Arcade uh, survives. Um, that's why we have the link up in the corner of the screen, freeplayinc.com slash save the arcade. There's a bunch of ways you could donate or buy merch or do whatever you can to help us and just... Uh, Anybody out there who's listening, if you help us, I don't know, if you can't do it that way, if you can 
share the stream that shares the link on the side. Um, I'm going live from noon till 10 p.m. Did you guys know this? I'm going 10 hours a day now. No. I'm glad you. Hours, I'm wow. glad you lowered it from 12 to 10 though. <laughs> <laughs> You're improving. <laughs> well, being live on the air 10 hours a day is plenty. And by the way, we go late sometimes too. So like last night it was three in the morning or whatever it was. And then, and then you go to sleep-ish, or you try, and then you wake up, and then the day starts again. And thankfully, I have good friends like L Trouble and Killer Miller to help me burn segments. Yeah, we're more than happy to help. But, I mean, I remember the first time we went to Texas for uh, your guys' 24-hour uh, charity stream event. That was exhausting in itself, and that was just one 24-hour session. So I don't know how you're... you're doing it for so long but props to you chris thank you it's been weird life in the past five years for me has uh has been sort of a culmination of everything i've ever done um mm -hmm. and every type of like because i played in arcades for a long time and i got people together and i ran tournaments and you know i i would quit one one avenue and then start another one and then get as far as i could and then quit and then start again and quit and start again and, then, and it just all just sort of came together at free play and now Aww. Now it's like, well, I also did 24-hour broadcasts like six, seven times, so I'm kind of uniquely ready to never sleep and maybe not have a camera in front <laughs> of my face the entire time. But... <laughs> it kind of worked out. Yeah. That's a really amazing skill set to put on a resume. <laughs> I can twenty-four. I can do 24-hour streams. I am always dedicated and working all the time. It's, I'd be but, terrified of putting that on my resume because of how miserable that particular experience makes me every year. Exactly. <laughs> like, I don't want to repeat it, but I can't do it. If, if oh, called man, the there goes my seventh question of, can you come back for the next 24-hour thing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> we're okay to come back. I don't know what the rest of you guys. Yeah, like, <laughs> we're always down to go to see you free play at any point in time. That's not the thing. It's just, I like sleep. I'm one of those people who like eight to ten hours of sleep. Well, I, and, and, and we like you when you're well-rested. I will say I do like when we have an old man versus uh, the young whippersnappers. You, Tanya, of <laughs> course, being a, a young whippersnapper um, in that tournament. Like, like the threat of waking you up throughout that tournament was so real and uh, so intimidating that we, we all respected that, uh, that if, if we got that far, that you would be woken up and then we'd have a... Uh, bedheaded uh, Killer Miller after us. And I've already revealed how good I do against you when you have a full night's rest. Um, when you're angry at me for waking you up, then it's it's just not much worse. And it was, by the way. That's usually when she plays her best. Like, all her like highlight moments throughout the years have definitely come after she was salty from a tournament loss or <laughs> she's angry at somebody or something. Just, I don't know. Yes. Wake is rage inside you, Tony. <laughs> Hulk moment. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I just love you know in my in my head the Akuma music starts playing whenever you step up to the joystick at free play. <laughs> um, I just remember rising from the dead like a vampire. <laughs> you were like hibernating. Like, everyone left you alone. You're just like your mama bear hibernating in her little, her little <laughs> dugout hole, and the so woke you up like what? Okay. I can't tell you the different places I've slept just to like catch some Z's and then wake up again to play a tournament. Have you have you ever have you ever gone back and watched that that particular one, Tanya? I haven't recently. I did it a year ago, I want to say. Okay, yeah, about okay. A year ago we like, like, like clips of that. If you if you do listen to it back and you only have to listen to it to experience this, like you really can hear Nate um just basically threatening all of us with you. Like, don't do it. <laughs> She's right there. Don't do it. I'll wake her up. You won't like it. Aww. Aww, we miss he... Nate. We, we haven't seen Nate in a while. Yeah, either. is he doing well? He is doing well. I don't know if he's in the chat right now. He said he might have to fall asleep. He works the overnight shift uh, uh, out in the Air Force Base in mm -hmm. uh, in Kansas. Uh, of course, he, he drives out to to here. He's He watches the stream every day. But he drives out here basically every other weekend and plays with us. So he is as much or more of a local than, than anybody. Yeah. The, 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 the Beltran play. Sorry. Sorry. Turbo in the background. Sorry. That, that's, that's a I'm cell getting, phone. I'm getting text messages. Hold yeah. on. Yeah. There, there's plenty there of ladies who like to te text. Oh, my them. God. If, if, <laughs> if I, was, our I didn't ace... zone on Discord. That's, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah. 
If, uh, Don't try way ahead of us in his own game. <laughs> We're not sure who is texting him right now, uh, but if uh, Ace Reporter, Ace Beltran Reporter, Carlos from Texas is in the chat, please let us oh know whom Wait, exactly man, is Carlos. texting Michael Beltran. It's, it's just my buddies. I was trying to help back immediately and I was trying to drill. What, what the <laughs> Why is there a tiger shot? Am I having a stroke? Is this it? Is this how I go out? Oh, no. <laughs> Oh my god. I do like we had the adventure earlier where we Googled I just Googled L Trouble Killer Miller Super Turbo uh -huh. and bam, there's a picture that you see right in front of you with Michael Beltran in it. Oh, oh that's the first one? Ooh. The celebrity it's knows not the no first bounds. One. It's, wow. it's on the screen. <laughs> not the first one that appears out of a Google. No. Yeah, so oh my god. So good news, Nate is in the chat. Hey, what's up, hey. but, but but one of the 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 many tragedies, and there are many 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 tragedies that that have gone on with uh, with fighting COVID nineteen and and the mm -hmm. forced shelter at home and everything that we've been going through is uh, we kind of had plans to move in together, and uh, that's kind of yeah. tossed aside as I no longer have a job, and nobody who has a job should ever quit their job right now. So it's <coughs> un unfortunately yeah, it's, it, it it's changed my life immediately. Person. Yeah, I think we're all going through some period of adjustment. Yeah, um, I guess yeah. Since, since we're there, like, how has it impacted you guys? So I'm, I'm very fortunate. Um, I work for a school district. So, um, so I work in a tutoring center at my local community college. So because we're deemed essential, um, basically my job has been just getting over 50 staff, including staff, uh, faculty and tutors onto an online resource to continue tutoring. So we've just had to move our system. We had parts of the system online, mm -hmm. luckily. And so we've just had to move the whole thing online. So I'm very fortunate. I can still continue my job. It's just been a lot of Zoom sessions, kind of like Discord here, you know? Yeah. Lots of tutoring that way. Mm -hmm. um, but that's me. And Eugene can probably speak more to him. Uh, my work's definitely slowed down a lot. I'm not technically barred from working, but um, with the nature of the justice industry or legal department uh, a lot of stuff has slowed down for me personally so my checks aren't as big as they used to be but fortunately me and tanya have a, a very small nest day that's keeping us going um and that's... you know being a gamer i'm pretty suited to being at home all day long so <laughs> oh, that's true. i'm that's true. perfectly fine mentally but uh tanya's going a little a little a little hard for her I, um well yeah. to be fair like i've been it's been a lot better since we've been biking and exercising and doing that. It's just that, yeah. like, we've been good, me and Eugene. Uh -huh. It's just we have a third person now that we also take care of, which is Eugene's mom. Uh -huh. So yeah, it's like it's taking care of her, too, and right. also educating her about what's going on. You know, she's 67. So um, does she understand been... now? Um, so is she looking to get yes. out and hang out with she just want to do hood rat stuff with her friends? Basically. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> she's, not, she's not much of a homebody, so she's trying to get out, and since she can't, and she's obeying the quarantine, but she's going a little crazy, a little high-strung. Yeah, intense. I feel um, like that's that's definitely uh, happening to all of us. We uh, Since I've gone online, and I've, I've, like I said, I've been, this has been like 17 days straight or something like that, where I've just been mm -hmm. converted my, I converted uh, the, the, the room that was dedicated to virtual reality. Uh, it was th therefore empty. I filled it up with stream gear thanks to some of our community members and nice. just going nonstop. But as part of this, uh, every day at 6.30, we have uh, one of our contacts, one of our, uh, the honestly, the Derby Devils contact, uh, Gori Midori. Uh, also, mm -hmm. her day job was a clinical psychologist, so she just checks in on us every day at 6.30. Um, and, and to that end, you know, she's given us plenty of uh, general advice, uh, although not therapy, because that would be illegal and immoral and a lot of things, but... Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the things that she said that I've taken her up on is just getting outside, walking around once a day, using a group to be accountable. And I know a big group. So every day at 10 a.m., I walk around the block and message everybody that I'm going. And they post pictures of their walk around the block and just everything we can to keep saying. Mm -hmm. I saw that yeah. on Facebook earlier today. I really enjoyed that, Chris. I'm proud of you for continuing that. Thank you. Yeah, we try, we try to get out and... Uh bike around, walk around, just do anything just to not be cooked up in the house. Because yep. other than the obvious financial economic damage this is causing, I think a lot of people are suffering mentally 
um, a lot of people. So. Absolutely. I, feel, I would I would guess everybody. Like I, I, I would guess 100% of us are suffering from this in some way. Like even, you know, uh, Angela herself uh, told told me that, um, you know, because we're going back and forth on the air, so that I don't feel bad revealing this. It, like, mm -hmm. you know, for her, um, she's she's more introverted. Um, for for me, I don't have anybody to be with. Like I'm I'm kind of stuck here alone, um, and that sucks. Uh, and I'm a very people person. That's that's a, I had my job. Um, right. For her, it's the opposite. Where she's she's got a great guy that she's with, and he's probably handsome. Um, however, she's been stuck on the world's longest date, and after three weeks of this, like she's just kind of needs her space. So it's it's really impacting everybody. There's no escape. Yeah, I think uh, we're feeling the same way. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, despite my reputation as super turbo, I'm actually very, very introverted. <laughs> so I think I'm better suited for uh, solitary work from home lifestyle the most. But you yes. know, I'm starting to feel it. Like, it kind of sucks not being able to go out and yes. see family you're... and friends. I've told and, you this yeah, many times. You're, you're really good in, in public, even, even though even though you, you're you are an introvert and it's not your your native place. Like, you do it very well. Yeah, but that's, that's shocking for most people who just know me from the scene. <laughs> I'm very extroverted when it comes to Turbo and the retro scene in general, but mm -hmm. in my day-to-day, quote-unquote, normie life, I'm pretty quiet. Um, but yeah, I love Talia to death, but after a few weeks being stuck with her, <laughs> I was like, I need you to go away. That's a lot of losses <laughs> just, piling just, up to Honda. I, mean, I totally I understand. I want you to be here, but not next to me. Just, yeah. you know, go downstairs and, you know, we separate for a little bit. Yeah, we've had to have new time, so like individual time, which is good, you know. Yeah, stay stay in there. We need the first couple of this to survive. Give, give us a small. We're things. hanging through, man. We're hanging. <laughs> We're hanging by a thread. I'm making a public. Damn! Shots fired. This guy. Here's our dirty lunch. <laughs> yeah. um, um, so it's, what? It's going to be a struggle, no matter what. But you know what? You know, coming out of this. We're lucky because me and Eugene have spent a lot of time with each other in the in the past, so we know each other really well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you you do have to take your own me time. You know, like he's totally right. Like last night, I started watching Tiger King by myself. He started, you know, coming up here to the office and doing his thing. You have you have to take me time. You know, or you could just stream twenty four seven right from your bedroom into infinity. That's what we've been thinking. Just to start up a stream, just to you know. I I'll actually don't recommend going 24/7. However, however, if you want to take like two hours of the load off of me any time or any amount of the load off of uh, of me, go for it. <laughs> I will. I will cede the floor to you. Um, uh, what are you guys playing now that you're sheltering at home? So I've been playing Tomb Raider because it was free like a week ago, and we've as a family been playing Mahjong to keep Mama Lin happy. <laughs> Eugene's Makes mom sense. happy. <laughs> uh, Eugene, what have you been playing? Uh, I've been playing uh, Doom. Uh, I've, I've Doom Eternal or Doom 2016? Or just Doom? Doom, 20, Doom 2016. Okay. And then once I get through that, I'm going to play through Doom Eternal because I hear amazing things about both games. And so far, yeah, it's been really fun playing those. It's it's literally the most metal game I've ever played. It, it, it yes! Was... Yeah, it's, it's very intense. And I miss yeah. it because I haven't played like an arena shooter in many, many years. So it's kind of nice getting back into a game where you don't have to hide behind cover. You can just run around shooting things in the face. It's uh. It's a simple joy. <laughs> it truly is, and that game does it very well. That's a, that's actually produced here in Dallas. Oh, it, oh. Really? yeah. Is yeah. software is it Bethesda or ID? You guys in Dallas? Yeah, ID, which is now owned by Bethesda, but uh, either way, uh, ID and Bethesda are both in Dallas, owned by Zenimax. Well, oh. but Bethe uh, Bethesda, some some of Bethesda in Austin and. Boston? I, I could be don't quote me on that one, but there the uh the Bethesda in Dallas is not the original Bethesda. Correct. Right. Yeah, there is a Bethesda Dallas that's an offshoot. It's just uh they and they're not even doing uh uh Doom. Um but it is the development team behind Yeah, I, I know Bethesda Doom. is in Bethesda, Maryland, which is why it's right, Bethesda. Exactly. But I didn't know yeah. I there know. is a Bethesda Dallas, but it's it's and and we have a uh, I forget who it was somebody somebody in our audience is, is with Bethesda Dallas, um, and uh, he actually he had me do a delivery for him as I'm the volunteer delivery driver for the restaurant of Free Play Arcade now, as Ooh, nice. everything is very very bizarre and surreal. 
Um, well, I think it's good for you. It gets you out of the house, gets you traveling, you know? And yet, and yet, I just miss... Like, I, it, it's a really anxiety-causing, as I know the stream is, is continuing on without me. And, like, I know if everything, like, falls apart in this moment, in this room... Like, this is the hub of this stream, the, the, mm -hmm. the Twitch tv slash free play arcade stream uh, all the equipment is here thank you to ray upshaw and and jerry d owls for putting it together uh on no notice um it's incredible and i'm looking at super guns and all kinds of cool stuff in front of me um but if it all falls apart i can hit buttons and be the emergency producer myself um there you go. meanwhile they're doing it remotely so we have two remote producers who can tie into my computer um, it's just, it's just so, I, it's anxiety causing to be out of the house at this point because I don't want the, the stream to go down and then suddenly feel like, you know, we lose cohesion as a group. Right, not not really at all stressful. You guys banding together and, uh, you know, keeping strong in these rough times. Yeah, you got a good support system here, Chris. Like yes. Free Play, yeah, free play board, is right? a great group. Yeah, trying Great. trying to continue to build it up and transition and pivot and stay alive. It's it's crazy. It felt like the world ended four days in a row. Yeah, it was uh, it was very sudden, you know. <laughs> like we kind of heard about it early on in January and early February, but then it, it comes to America. It's like wow, this is this is this is life changing, you know. Well, since I got so, you both both here, how'd you guys meet? Well, <laughs> hey, Tanya, that's not much of a story, but Tanya, go ahead. Uh, is this a G-rated stream or an R-rated stream? <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Let's go it's PG. Let's go PG thirteen. Like, How about if you got it, if you have to curse, you can you can use you can use the first letter. So are there? I guess I'm going with Eugene. Are there children watching? <laughs> are there children watching? Penelope, are you here yet? <laughs> There's gonna be because I'm gonna text Penelope right now. Assume she's in. Okay, she's let's assume it's okay. So, for the children. I'll keep. I'll turn it. I need that reminder. All right, so um, basically we were friends before, and um, thanks to one night of watching movies and drinking alcoholic beverages, we became more than friends. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, there, I definitely remember playing Smash and getting very competitive with you. I definitely remember playing lots of fighting games and getting competitive with you. And thanks to alcohol and other factors, we became more than friends. Yay! Do you, do you guys remember actually meeting? Like, you were friends before. Do you remember meeting? Uh, yes. So, I think the first time me and Tanya actually met was that we had um, mutual friends together. Mm -hmm. And I was hanging out at my buddy Josh's house. And we were just hanging out like we do. And then Tanya came over and we played, like, Super Monkey Ball or something mm -hmm. like okay. that. So, that's the first time we met. But, like, it, you know, nothing came of it. It's cool, I guess. Were you guys both into fighting games at the time or before? So I was playing my friends Soul Calibur 2 at the time, but it, again, it was a very casual level. Mm -hmm. Playing friends, um, you're kind of like in intimate group, not necessarily going to tournaments or any of that. I had no clue of the scene. Mm -hmm. So we, luckily my friends were big video gamers, so we played a lot of competitive like party games. So again, Smash, Soul Calibur, you know... Um, Mario Party, lots of different things we played together. I mean, back then we played everything. We're mm -hmm. still pretty big into Counter Strike, still am. We played RTS games, played Warcraft, Starcraft. WoW was the biggest one for a while there. Um, yeah, WoW's taken yeah, away yeah. roughly eighty-five percent of our audience. Like we would, we'd already be back in business if it wasn't for WoW Classic. <laughs> That's a common story. <laughs> um, what got you into fighting I games? Ragnaros last night. There you, there you go. go. See. see? <laughs> Present company included. Oh, sorry, sorry. Bokai oh, yeah. wants to know what race and class. Oh, for or me? Warrior. Oh, a warrior. Torn? Torn warrior? Torn? All right, okay. <laughs> what about you, Tanya? So, sadly, since I didn't understand well, I was just, I would watch them play, believe it or not. I would just watch them in the background, <clears> sit down on the carpet and watch. I played one time I started a build, and I don't even remember what the class was, but... So, I was basically, basically, <laughs> I was a stream monster in those days, but sitting on the carpet instead of using the computer to watch them play. <laughs> I no, I actually love that experience. Uh, um, I mean, that's part of 
that's part of what I do, right? I get people to play games, and then I enjoy like watching them play as well. I love watching people grow. I don't even mind watching noobs play. Like, you know, it, as long as the the matches are competitive, then it's drama and it's fun, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've had that a lot where like friends just watch me play like GTA or Half Life or whatever. It's, it's weird, but I remember watching you playing uh, Uncharted. That was a fun time when we. Yeah, but Uncharted is like a movie. Yeah, you it's a narrative, so I can, I yeah. can definitely see that. You just want to experience the story at that point. Uh, exactly. Last yeah, of general, Last of Us game. is like that as well. Oh, that one I finally played on my own. I screamed probably the entire time. But that was such a good video game. I like yell at Tanya. No, you can't just watch it on YouTube. <laughs> Play the game to understand why it's so great. And I'm glad you did. Yeah. It's a great game. I love it. It nah. was a great game, but it was tough for me. <laughs> I, I'm with you. Play, playing the game is, is it's a unique, a unique narrative. It probably holds up on YouTube. But something about like being the willing participant in the, that plot line, you know, you get, you get much more emotionally involved, or I did, uh, especially towards the end when they were, there were, moral quandaries to be had and i just really wanted to kill all the doctors and save the girl at the end <laughs> spoiler <Pretty much>. alert <laughs> i know slight, slight spoiler alert. um but no, i feel like in that game the mechanics definitely i'm just saying what i wanted to do i'm not saying how the game ended <laughs> that's true. like that's that is what i felt like no matter what like i was just gonna make that happen if i could um what uh what got you guys into fighting games um for me personally so i remember this still we're we're still going back and forth on our memory but i we think we've kind of like deduced our first ever tournament so we eugene got me in by showing me cross counter especially mike ross i really gravitated towards that and his like amazing enigmatic personality Street Fighter 4 era. yeah so he got me really invested in like the scene and the and all the like you know all the relationships and the competitiveness and that scene. that why you play e honda yes partially yes yeah mike ross right. heavy influence uh but also um because when she was learning super turbo she was like trying to find characters that suit her i told her hey just pick blanca honda or chun because i feel like at a beginning level those are pretty good characters to learn and you'll get some like results uh, so her first character was Blanca, which she likes a lot, so likes playing. But then once she found Honda and Mike Ross, his influence, <laughs> it was over. All Honda all the way. So he, Eugene is a smart mofo. He gets me invested in the, you know, in the, in the drama and kind of like, you know, the whole. Well, the personalities of the fighting game players. Exactly. Thank you. Um, so he gets me invested in that. And then from there... Uh, we were, me and my family took month, took a uh, yearly trips to Las Vegas in the summer, and we just so happened to be in Las Vegas the year Evo was there, and this was when Evo was still free. Yep. So we literally just on a whim were like, hey, we know this. We heard about Evo talking about, you know, Mike Ross Cross Counter always talks about it. Let's go. And sure enough, we walk into our first Evo, and oh my gosh, we fell in love. <laughs> that we were watching MVC two as the audience. MVC2, uh, UMVC3, we went to all these, like, booths. Um, I was too shy to ask my cross for, for a signature at the time. I just was like, whoa! <laughs> you know, that same um, thing happened to Lauren Featherstone when Afro Legends came to town. And I was like, you're a world record holder. Your your poster is literally on my wall. Just ask the dude. And, and then I had to walk over there and ask. Be like, uh -huh. Make the introduction. Um... And while we were walking by one of the BYOCs, Eugene goes, I used to play that game. <laughs> you want to take it over, babe? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've, much like most 90s kids, I played Street Fighter 2 when it first came out. Mm -hmm. Blue My Mind, all that kind of stuff. And then uh, I played like the Versus series games, like Marvel 1 and X-Men Street Fighter, a little bit of Alpha 2, I think, as a kid. Mm -hmm. And I stopped playing for a long time because I played other games. Mostly Half-Life, Counter-Strike, FPS games. And then, uh, yeah, I got back into fighting games around Street Fighter IV's release. Because that was a big deal at the time. First seen Street Fighter in a while. And then through that, I, you know, I met up with tournaments. I went to Evo. I went to my local arcade at the time, Super Arcade. All that kind of stuff. Um, but no, Evo 2011, which is our first Evo that we went to as spectators, was definitely like kind of the turning point. And then that was our first time we realized that there was a Super Turbo like community in SoCal and at Evo. 
And I remember it was crazy to me because when I first saw those guys at Evo, they were playing out of a UPS box. <laughs> or, uh, uh, sorry, USPS box. Uh-huh. Oh my goodness. Sort of box. I was like, how are you guys playing video games out of <laughs> So they had like, a super gun in a box, is that right? Magic is it? <laughs> so it was a ghetto super gun that DGV was running at Evo. He was like, oh, the tournament has ended for the for the weekend, but... You know, if you're interested, you know, um, they do ST tournaments over at Super Arcade. You should go say hi to this guy named Muffin Man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mike Watson. But still that that damn post office box. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is this one? <laughs> I didn't know they had this kind of technology in the modern age. Right. <laughs> super gun in a post office box. That's how ghetto some super guns are. <laughs> yeah. Works. I, I'm and, glad you guys uh, were able to hold the scene up together, like, with that level of equipment. Like, whatever it took. I I don't want to call it a super gun because I feel that's too grandiose. But I bought a JAMA harness uh -huh. and a uh, and an arcade power supply, and got stuff to work on a screen once, and it was just wires everywhere. <laughs> oh, trust me. For for a long time, when we were our SoCal local business, uh, we borrowed a super gun from uh, Don Don's arcade, Don. Uh huh. That man had super guns literally too. Literally, electronic components uh, bolted to a plank of wood. Yep. <laughs> Mine like a, had like no a, wood. <laughs> no, like a plank of wood. Like it could be a plank that you find like a drift in the ocean. <laughs> it wasn't even a two by four. It was like I a like three that. by seven or something like that. I, I really do kind of like that. <laughs> yeah. It was just like here's the thing. Here it's bolted to a plank of wood. <laughs> here's the thing here. Like oh, wait, the, the video supply. cut out. Eugene, bust out your soldering kit so you can, like, reconnect everything. Yeah, pretty I much. I remember that. I got, I got a really good at soldering thanks to that thing. <laughs> yeah, you guys went that route, huh? I, I've, I've avoided learning the technical stuff just because I'm doing so much other stuff. And, and Josh, our, our Free Play Arcade's lead tech, has, has rightly pointed out that I intentionally avoided it so I wouldn't get, you know, overwhelmed by it. Meanwhile, Arthur's taking the other tact and, like, have you been soldering, Arthur? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mm -hmm. took a SCART cable and ripped the uh, connector out and soldered the uh, the video to that on my non-super gun pile of wires. <laughs> it's a super gun. It counts. It works. <laughs> if you can get things to be on a screen and you hear Hadouken, that's... Uh, <laughs> yep. It's a, you're verified. It's at least an adequate gun. <laughs> that, that's a better explanation of what I have, yes. <laughs> um, I guess that answers my next question of why Super Turbo. Well, actually, no, it doesn't. Why? Why Super Turbo? Why did that one? So you saw DGV there out of his USPS box. Um, <laughs> why did you like? I want to follow this dude. So, so I didn't follow this dude. I stuck with the Street Fighter Four crew. Uh -huh. I know, but for me, because it was the to be fair, it was the most um, social. It was the most out there. You know, more people were active on social media. There is a bigger group for being competitive. Um, again, my my uh, my senpai at the time, or my sensei, was my cross. You know, that's what I'm holding up. So, mm -hmm. of course, I'm going to dive deep into the Street Fighter 4 world. Mm -hmm. So I start going to Super Arcade for Wednesday Night Fights. I start going into there. But Eugene, since I was, we were going to um, Super Arcade every week, he followed up with Muffin Man, who was running Super Turbo, and he uh, initially started in the EST crowd. And um, for me, I was doing really bad in Street Fighter 4, like, month after month. And I love you, Jane. <laughs> but he was like, uh, and he's like, Tanya, I love you, but your fundamentals suck. Because <laughs> he had watched a couple of my matches. They still suck. He, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and see we fight even in real life and um uh he was like you should try super turbo to get your fundamentals down so through that i started joining their weekly st sessions on the stand-up kept smart man my love all a part of the play <laughs> <laughs> nothing's an accident in my world dolls and players <laughs> dolls and players we have play you from time in real life and the game so that's when i started uh straddling both worlds of doing ST and Street Fighter 4. Mm -hmm. um, and then, it, depending, honestly, it depends on the year, because sometimes I straddle the Street Fighter 5 world still. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of mm -hmm. always, I've I've always had my feet in both kind of systems, for sure. Yeah, for me, I played I played Street Fighter 2 original in the arcades way, way back when I was a young kid. And then I played on the SNES version, which is where I played Street Fighter 2 a lot when I was young, like... The SNES, SNES version was fantastic. It was really good. 
And then years later, uh, me and Tanya went to a round one arcade, which is like this uh, giant entertainment center where there's arcade yeah. games and claw games. Bowling, yeah, we, we have one here in the Metroplex. Yeah, it's just like you know, like a one-stop shop for like just having fun. Mm -hmm. And then we went there and I saw Super Turbo. I was like, cool, I used to play Street That, that I've never seen in a yeah. round one. I've never seen Super Turbo there. May, oh, maybe, yeah, they were there at the beginning. Yeah. Maybe there was one in, in, in the one in, I went to in Japan, but actually I didn't. I just sort of like, there's round one. I'm going to keep on going to <laughs> another place, so, Nakahabra. Not to interject, it depends <clears throat> on your regional manager for every round one. They can decide which games go to which places. Gotcha. So okay, so the one, the one in Dallas thinks that Super Turbo is not a game worth having at round oh. one. Ouch, that hurts. That it's hurts okay, we'll, we'll take up that slack, don't worry. I uh, know it's not like you guys are hurting for arcade centers to play. Well, <laughs> currently, <laughs> currently, but we're we're doing everything we can to bring it back. So, it's yeah. It, no, this has I been understand. incredibly frustrating. Being you know, literally like we've brought Super Turbo to Dallas. Like we've brought it up out of virtually nothing, and everybody's an arcade purist here because we have Versus Cities and mm -hmm. Blast Cities, and like we got everything we need to to go in the arcade. We got people. We got locals. We got it all. And it's all just ripped away from us. So we had Tuesday night fights. I, I, I think you guys have saw the post. We had it uh, Tuesday, and mm -hmm. we had to have it on Fightcade. It's just it's so disheartening at this point. Yeah, but I mean, at this point, you just gotta do what you gotta do to keep it going. And, we uh, are... I've, had, I've said it many times, but you guys. Yeah, we're doing everything, everything we can for sure. In Dallas, so you should do whatever you can to maintain it, because uh, at least here in SoCal, we understand what it's like having a hot spot that. Um, just ends one day out of, out of nowhere and it sucks well so we're just trying to let you guys know what you guys have here is very unique very special rare or impossible to duplicate anywhere else so yeah if anyone once again if anyone listen wants to help us uh keep it going freeplayinc.com slash save the arcade we're doing everything we can you can definitely help um let's see when did you start realizing you were getting good like did you have any idea like when you when you started playing eugene did you did you have your eyes on being the best sim in the in the country or was it just organic or when did it when did it get out of hand uh so in the beginning it was more like still play super turbo i didn't i didn't know there was a scene for the game mm -hmm. so i i was like oh, that's kind of surprising and i've never played super turbo before because um at least back in the day, no one really played Super Turbo in the 90s. Like, by the time ST came out, uh, Mortal Kombat started coming out, and the Alpha series. So, to, to my knowledge, no one really played ST when it first came out. It didn't uh, get I never played it again back until then, the yeah. mid-2000s, um, early mid-2000s. And then, so I thought, okay, cool. I like, I like this game a lot. I'm a big Street Fighter 2 guy. Let's just play it. And then, in the beginning, it was just, like, having fun and meeting new people. But once I realized that the scene in SoCal is full of really strong competitive players i'm like oh this is really interesting like uh i'm losing a lot a lot and losing money while doing it but i'm still having fun which i guess is a good sign of a good game so in the beginning it was just to have fun and then um definitely coming up in socal playing guys like muffin man dgv afro legends Valle, paper cut lucas uh i realized like I've never got my my Ryu, which is my first character and the one I play the most. Like my Ryu is, ne is never gonna be as good as DJ. So I feel like no matter how good I get with this character, I will always just be compared to the million other Ryus who play this game. So I wanted to find a different character that was strong, but also a character that I could like show off more of my I don't know, like individual play style or personality or whatever. And at the time, no one really played Dalsum, even though he was a good character. I was like, okay, I'll just give Dawson a try because he's a, he's a top tier. So I had no real <laughs> excuse if I lose. If I lose, it's because I suck, which I feel like I do anyways. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I went with that for a while, and I spent a good year, two years, yeah, something like that, losing every tournament I went to, going like zero and two, one and two, two and two. Um, but knowing that, hey, if I put the work in, Dawson will be a very good character that will reward me one day with some wins, and it kind of worked out. But I never actually felt like, oh, I'm getting good at this game. So I feel like the more I play this game and the more I travel, the more I'm, I'm exposed to different different play styles, and different regions, different players, and uh, all of whom are very, very good. So definitely going to Europe and Japan opened my eyes and made me realize, wow, there's a lot of incredible players out there. And no matter how much better I get, I feel like I feel like the mountaintop is so much further away <laughs> than it used to be. <laughs> Well, when I first started playing, 
I feel so you. I never felt like I'm like good. I just feel like, hey, I'm just, I'm just learning the game like everyone else. And yeah. if I win, neat. If not, someone's better than me. So I was somewhere out there. So I have to work harder. So I, I like I that to. feeling. I like, I like, I like a hill to climb because I've been on on tops of other hills before, and I find that incredibly boring and instantly boring, and I just quit. Um, yeah, it's gratifying, but then you lose interest. Yeah. So I think it's a better way to be. Yeah. Now, one one of my biggest motivating factors uh, for for getting better and better at Super Turbo, and you know, arguably how good I, I've gotten, but like, it's it's literally to make people like you know Boat Guy uh, here and 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 others, you know, not lose interest because they have nobody who can even you know challenge them or or, or play with them. It's not like Sean right. Crane's gonna come play us every day. Yeah, and uh, you guys have a pretty healthy rotation of guys who are winning. Like for a while there, it was like like B. Carlos got a few good wins. Both guys definitely getting better and better mm -hmm. and better. Sean Crane, who would play for a bit, was getting better. Mm -hmm. Rob, the Chun player. Um, yeah. So you guys have a lot of competition for who is the quote unquote the best at free play. Yes. It's good. Yeah, it's good. I could. Uh, Jesus is is I would say the best. Oh, Jesus. That's oh yeah, you forgot Jesus. Yeah, he right. beat me twice. He so did far, beat yeah. you. Yeah, but at the same time, like, it's it's. There is a lot of competition. Like, Jesus doesn't win for free. Uh, Boat Guy says claw players don't count. He <laughs> might not be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> My man, Jeremy. I knew it like that. <laughs> uh, but no, I feel like Jeremy and Mike are a superstar here. He's getting pretty, pretty close to being top dog. And... Sorry, your mic so. completely cut out when you were talking about Beltran. Can you repeat yourself? <laughs> oh, okay. no, it wasn't that important anyways. Don't worry. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> No, there's a lot, of, a lot of players who are growing together, and as long as that continues to be the case, I think we'll be a large and healthy scene. Uh, okay. I feel like I, I want to do my part by just like continuing to be somebody that people can grow off of and help spread the game. Mm. Um, let's see. So you get better marginally yeah. or however you feel you are. Um, what do you feel like uh, is your crowning achievements as a player, at least in Super Turbo terms? Tanya, I'll let you go first. <clears throat> or do we tell you? <laughs> I mean, I've got a I've got a top ten list for you, Tanya. But okay. I would rather I would rather hear what you feel like is is your most prideful moment as a player of Super Turbo. Okay, well, I guess we'll switch it up, and I'll tell Tanya hers or what I think is. Yeah. So for me, I feel like her most crowning achievement was definitely beating Kusamondo, mm -hmm. TOL three this past year. Uh. Because, you know, she was kind of the underdog in that matchup, and understandably so, because Kusumundo is, like, top top two Honda in the world. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, having her 3-0 Kusumundo was absolutely amazing. And it wasn't like it was a matchup advantage or... You yeah, know, no, I don't think she he had a superior super character. Well all that day. Yeah, she played amazingly well that day. And it's funny, because, like, her and Kusumundo had the same play style, like, very aggressive. Mm -hmm. Like, even though both of them probably should have turtled more, they don't want to. <laughs> Which I admire. I'm like, the smart thing is to just calm down and let Tanya make mistakes. But, like, neither of them do that. They just butt heads. Mm -hmm. And Tanya's head happens to be sturdier that day. Than <laughs> um, but, yeah, that was a that was an incredible win for her. A good win for her. I think another one is one that not many people know about, which is um, EVO 2013 ST Games. And that year we held four tournaments at EVO, one of which was the ratio tournament, where you had, like, a certain amount of points to spend on a character. And you like build a team of characters that you can use in tournament. So like top tiers cost a lot of points. So if you play Dalsum, you might have enough points for like a Guile or whatever. Right. Um, but that year, Tanya had like Blanca, Honda, and someone else. And she fought Mars Gotti, who's a very good Guile player in the US, still a very good Guile player. Yes. And the had, one like, that got DJ... away for Spring Series. I I I I offered him a free trip. He wouldn't come. Uh... Yeah, but he's he's still an incredible Guile player. Yes, think, he is. Best. Yes, he's yeah. amazing. And yeah, and Tanya also OCV'd his entire team using Blanca, who <laughs> wasn't even. And I was watching her. I was like, I have never seen her do these like counter strategies before. But like that day, she was just so angry and filled with the spirit of rage that she was doing things like kind of on autopilot that she had never done in training because I had only ever trained with her. I was like, where did she learn this? Like, how did she know that works against that? She didn't know is the answer. She just felt it in her heart. <laughs> Like, screw this guy. I'm going to hit this button because it should work. Wow, yeah, she goes to nice. beat him. So, yeah, a lot of her best moments were beating really good players who were should have won against her. Yeah. 
That is really cool. I like that. I like that beating Daigo in tournament doesn't even make the list. You've got so many achievements. That's yeah. I mean, beating Daigo was cool too, but like, no, yeah, it OC happens. Cemented. You should <laughs> own it. Beating Daigo one game, cool. Possible, cool. Three O is convincing. That's like. Mm -hmm. Aww. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm right there with you. I, I agree. Like that's that for my, from my limited knowledge of, uh, of following you guys as fans throughout the years, like that's. That's my my thought. What about okay? I guess uh, Tanya, tell tell me about Eugene's crowning achievement as a player. And let me, I will. And let me just say thank you, my love, because I still haven't I still haven't been a champion at anything yet. I've always gotten so many seconds and third places, so that's why I was stuttering on what my achievement is. So thank you, my love. Thank you, Eugene. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, but like it's whatever. Um. So. Uh, for Eugene, it definitely has to be, and he'll probably agree to this. And I'm looking at the trophy as we Hell speak. yeah, we're <laughs> oh. it. They can't see you, I won't touch it. We, we lost you. The combo breaker uh, trophy, trophy when he won first place. Even though that was a beautiful moment afterwards, it really was like Eugene's biggest win for uh, ST because he's, he's won SCRs before. He's won... Um, other tournaments too, but Combo Breaker was nice because it was the first, I would say first outside U.S. tournament he won. That outside was outside US. of California. Out, oh. I'm sorry. Outside of California, <clears throat> outside of Evo, kind of that he won. Because sometimes the problem is, is because we run Evo or we run um, SCR, sometimes there's like, oh, you know, he shouldn't be winning because he's also running the tournament. Um, and the, um, I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah. So th this was nice because... One, he finally got to just focus on being a player. Two, he didn't have to be a tournament organizer. So it was it was a really great achievement to show and prove like how great of a player he is, especially when you don't make him T.O. something. <laughs> and it was funny because that tournament, um, there was – so the main the main player I was worried about that tournament was a guy named uh, Brent, who's an uh, immortal. Claw player. Claw player, really, uh -huh. really uh -huh. – <laughs> player but like you know it's claw i'm worried about claw right but then once uh uh josh took him out um i forget his handle jiggly norris yes he beat brent whirling and losers and i i, I had steven cytoscope 88 and tony next to me and i grabbed both of them i was like oh my god i'm gonna win <laughs> i gotta win there's no claw blocking me yeah it's smooth sailing from here on out I, I, as but a fellow you, Sim Norris, player, I, I owe this one to you. <laughs> as a fellow Sim player, I, I 100% know what you mean. In fact, I was at Combo Breaker the next year and I lost to two claw players. Surprise, surprise. Yep. 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 yep so. No worries. If I, if I, if that's, I, I will keep butting my heads against claw until I figure it out. And in the meantime, you know, if I, if I lose to someone with the one character matchup advantage, then I'm not going to feel too terribly bad. Yeah, exactly. And it feels good being claws. I think everyone can. Agree. <laughs> Uh, yes, really I think everyone can agree that it feels good beating a claw player. Like even if they're not good, I was like, oh, I felt, I felt good. <laughs> Every inch of that win, I felt it. <laughs> but yeah, that was a good tournament, and I got engaged. I guess that's kind of cool too. That was that was all right. The pretty pretty decent <laughs> side prize you got there. <laughs> I guess. Congrats, Tanya, on your marriage. I guess. I don't know. It's this. Uh, okay, tell tell us tell us about your give us give us the engagement story because while I know it, and I was watching it live, and and uh, there's a few in the audience right now who are there live. I'm sure there are other people that that don't know. So if you could, uh, uh, how did you two end up getting engaged? So I guess I'll tell my side of the story because we both have different sides. Um, for me, I knew I wanted to spend the rest of my life with Eugene, and I've always kind of like bandied about the idea oh if you i've cut you know if eugene wins a tournament i'll propose to him um you know some some people might remember there was even a don's arcade qualifier for something i don't even remember what it was and eugene was playing damn die for grand finals and i remember screaming if you win i'll marry you and i've done like fake uh no pressure <laughs> yeah <laughs> fake proposals in the last is it 14 years now in in november can yeah, 14 out? years coming on November. Yeah, so 14 years, years in November, yeah. So um, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to propose to this guy. I got just really, f I just was like, no, it's time. Like, it's, uh, I, we've had many conversations. We, you know, Eugene has always said we want to get married. And I was like, why do I have to wait for him? 
<laughs> so <laughs> I started planning a secret uh, proposal. I started, you know, looking for rings. I started doing, I started asking his family for uh, his sisters and his mom for approval. It was really cute. It, I was like, wow, I understand the other side now. <laughs> this is a lot of pressure, but this is a lot of fun. <laughs> And uh, I decided to do it at Combo Breaker because I was like, you know what? I have a good feeling about this. My right. plan was we'd both be in grand finals, but Jimmy Bones! <laughs> I held up my head at the board again. <laughs> I made the grand finals. I even have a screenshot of me. <laughs> that made me salty. Um, you got top eight. I know, but I, my, my goal was to be in grand finals and propose to you. I still have screenshots from when I messaged Rick, the CEO of... Um, uh, see, bleh, sorry, the combo breaker uh, to and he, I asked you know him for permission, and he was just like you know the tournament comes first. <laughs> right. I appreciate this, you know, that logistics. It was really sweet that he's like, yeah, I'm totally for it. Mm -hmm. So you know, a day of, I think he's gonna find out because I'm in a dress for a tournament. I'm never in a dress. Well suspect. But my girl Kendra. Oh, uh, Eugene goes, why are you dressed so nice? And Ke and I don't have any answer. And Kendra, don't, don't worry, she's living her best life. <laughs> but I knew something was up. Like, that's not normal. That's not normal. <laughs> so my girl squad came out that day. It was amazing. Um, and yeah, um, I told, I basically told everyone, hey, this is happening. Don't tell Eugene, but be here <laughs> at this time. I, yeah. She did a good job keeping a secret. Like, I had no idea until I saw her with a dress. You saw, you saw her with a dress? Sorry. What, yeah, she wore a dress yeah, that so day. The, so the dress and was then, a tip-off. Um, and then after I won the tournament, like, I saw a bunch of people show up with cameras. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is not normal for an ST tournament. Like, no, no, it's, like it, it's perfectly normal when you win an ST major. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, like, like everyone in the crowd was, like, filming. I'm like, <laughs> why are they filming? That's How do we know how these guys? <laughs> um, when, yeah, when a Dawson like, player wins a no tournament, that's what happened. They handed I, me the I belt, know, right? <laughs> and 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 they were like, "You keep this belt." <laughs> no, sorry. Um, but yeah, Tanya kept it a pretty good secret, which I'm surprised about because Honda players are not really this. Cr <laughs> so I'm like, wow, it's like a very intricate uh, plan and, and uh, strategy here. How come you can't do this in Street Fighter? What's going on here? This also coming from the guy who lost to me in the tournament in Europe, so better watch your Honda game there, Who plays higher? Who plays higher? You play... No, I placed higher. And the singles are in team tournament. Both. I'm talking about the night before the tournament we ran, where it was East oh, who versus cares? West. I beat you. <laughs> who cares? Uh, uh, who Bokai cares? has it right. I think we need a first to ten to solve this argument. <laughs> I mean, we're pretty used to doing that anyway. But yeah, Fair I'm enough. down um uh, anyways so uh um, what, i guess what about what it, you you wanted to hear it from both sides uh tanya what was it like on your side uh uh so my side wasn't as involved so tanya you had a ring there so it had something involved yeah so uh she didn't notice but i've had the ring for like a few months at that point mm -hmm. and i wanted to propose to her but like i didn't know when where how i'm not too much of a like a crazy planner like Tanya is. <laughs> but I felt I always felt like do it while we're outside of California. I don't know why. I felt like this would be nice if we if I propose somewhere not in California. Anywhere. Chicago, te Texas, Europe, Japan, wherever. So I brought the ring on the combo breaker trip just in case. Like I said, if there's if there you need a venue, there's one in Texas. If I if I can get it back open, it's yours. It's not a bad idea, Tanya. Yeah, um... it's cheaper. There'll be arcade cabs there already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll make them build the stage. It's all good. <laughs> See, here's a problem: is that me and Tanya debate this all the time whether or not we should have arcade cabs or a wedding. And I feel like if there are cabs there, I'm not even gonna go to the wedding. <laughs> you just you you get, you'd have to like work out the ceremony slash tournament. You, it would it would definitely be uh, uh, involved on the planning side, but but I think you could pull it off if like. Ceremony, and then, and then, you know, you may now first attend the bride. <laughs> but see, here's the thing: is I should want me to do the first dance. Whoa, you're you're breaking up. What was that? <laughs> we were like, you know, if if we had to do vows or do like a first dance, I'll be like, I'm playing a first to five. Give me a second. <laughs> you're right. No, it will. It will. Busy. It would be My an unconventional wedding. Be. However, it would be awesome, and you know, it'd be memorable and. 
You'd, uh, honestly, intrusive. you'd have the best <laughs> wedding ever. I don't know what you're talking about. That would be literally the best wedding ever. I think it'd be amazing, but I think our families would be kind of pissed. Hey, you're getting married. I'm like, oh, whatever. <laughs> well, maybe they would have appreciated it. Maybe they would have appreciated it more if they would have done better in the tournament. That's all. <laughs> so I threw this idea with Eugene. Actually, I don't. I think I've told him before. Um, ooh, ooh, I want a loser bracket. I don't know how I'm gonna have a loser bracket at a wedding. Bracket. Well, uh, I, I have a loser's bracket consultant actually in the chat. Beltran, can you make this happen for them? Absolutely. See? There you go. Oh, Hollywood. I knew Beltran would come through. Yeah, if you need loser's <laughs> bracket loser information. Bracket. I don't know how it's going to work out. Like a trivia game or something. <laughs> bracket, but. It'll be, a, it'll be a history first. First ever wedding with a loser's bracket. It'll be genius. That is genius. Thanks, something tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were thinking about like seating, like so. My plan is I've I've received this uh, is like my plan is for every table to be their own like team, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna have like uh, we're gonna make them play rock paper scissors with each other until they have a champion of each team, and they're gonna represent each table and play each other um super turbo and then we'd like give out prizes and whatnot. Oh, they will play ST. Yeah, oh, yeah, so that's my idea. And then um, the winner gets to play one of us. Oh dear! Oh, but this could be heated bad. That's a this prize. Could really bad. <laughs> I I definitely have heavy money on you two. <laughs> I know, but like we have a lot of like competitive. They may be competitive, but they aren't winning. But see, here's the deal: is no matter what, the table has to cheer on their champion. Do you know what I mean? I'm not sure of the champion if I lose. <laughs> I mean, screw that guy! He beat me in my own wedding. <laughs> you know, I don't think you gotta worry about that. <laughs> but I was also in the mindset like I don't like doing. I me and Eugene don't always like being the center of attention. That's kind of our thing. Mm -hmm. So, but if it's Street Fighter, we're okay with it. Which is funny. I think it's like in direct opposition. So, like even like our first dance, we're thinking now nah, let's just do like money matches instead of like a money dance. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I think considering. You know, if, if somebody has a problem with it, I mean, look at the media coverage of your wedding, of your engagement. Like, clearly, <laughs> you, you two are special individuals. You have a special relationship, both to each other and to, to this, this fighting game community that you helped foster. Um, so I, I think it's, it's beautiful all the way around. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't feel ashamed at all. I would lean into it if I were you guys. But what do I do? See, you're part of the gaming community, but for the normies? The normies are not going to understand, Tony. I, yeah. I, I, you have, you have your concerns. I, I, I gotcha. <laughs> I do deal with people though, so you know, I, I'm, I'm more than just a, a closeted super turbo player. <laughs> I'm with, I'm with Delp on this one, Eugene. I don't think we should keep our love of super turbo in the closet for our wedding because it's a big part of who we are, and I think we should incorporate people into it as much as we can. You're right; it's going to be a hard transition. Yeah. But I think if you do something like that, where you make it fun and competitive for everyone you'd be surprised yeah it's I, funny because in the beginning tanya wanted zero super turbo and because, now she's like let's just have an st turbo with the way yeah now we're talking you always do multiple <laughs> ceremonies and if you do, do you know why i, I have the into that idea eugene is because Vaya gave me really good advice he's like well planning your wedding is just planning the biggest tournament of your life right and i went Holy shit, my... Oh, sorry. Holy. <laughs> Holy. We'll live. Shiitake You'll mushrooms, right. Holy, Holy pineapple. Uh, Holy pineapple. That's a really good advice. Well, speaking of uh, uh, cursing into microphones, do you uh, <laughs> do you guys know about the kids Super Turbo tournaments we're doing? Yeah, of course. Yeah. You guys were instrumental. I follow, I'll follow out every week. Whenever, whenever I, I always check in on you guys to make if uh, my boy Sonic Matt is doing well <laughs> or we got these and uh, it's good to see that there's a rotation of uh, kid champions popping up like that. Yeah, just I just wanted to ask you your thoughts. You're actually involved in the formation of the kids Super Turbo tournaments. I had done kids Super Turbo tournaments before, but you know, in in case anybody doesn't know, here um, the the regular kids two Super Turbo tournaments were just uh, uh, our one of our true brothers in the Dallas Super Turbo scene. Um, of course, it's me, and it's Beltran, and it's Carlos, and it's all these people who are in the basically first generation of Super Turbos, tur Super mm -hmm. Turbo players here in Dallas, and it's Penelope. She was one of us. She is one of us. Mm -hmm. um, and she stepped away from the scene because, you know, 
things happen when you're a 13, 14 year old girl and priorities change and your ability to get out to the arcade changes. So I just wanted to make a stage with basically her name on it. And anytime she wanted to saunter back through the arcade, um, she could be the, the guest of honor because she's one of us and we missed her. Um, Aww. yeah. And then, and then I, I did it the first time and Penelope wasn't there. And I was like, you know what? This is, this is worthwhile. Like, this makes me feel good, and it's right down the street from me. As long as I can mm -hmm. roll in here Sunday at two o'clock, it's just worth it, you know. And I'll do it for birthday parties. I don't care. They sell they sell my services to birthday parties anyway, so why not do it for free now? Um, and then and then from that, you know, Sonic Matt ar arrived, and then the rest was history. I just I'm not quitting now. We have a champion. Yeah, I was very impressed by the levels of maturity from both Sonic Matt and Penelope. I was like really astounded that kids that young could be that dedicated and motivated to play. And like, it's pretty rare seeing, you know, kids play against adults in Super Turbo because maybe they feel intimidated or whatever. But um, at least those two for me, which is, you know, uh, the the kids I've had the most interactions with. Right, right. Yeah. Really and that's just play wherever, anytime, any place, doesn't matter who they were. And they're playing. They're very good players too. Like I was that. I wasn't that good when I was their age. So it's very admirable having those two. Joe. Yeah. No. No. Sonic Matt is approaching. Like he he gets top ten in our monthlies uh, on the regular now. So mm -hmm. wow. Like adults aren't as good as Sonic Matt on occasion. Uh, yeah. More than occasion. Yeah. Like <laughs> he will wreck you if you if you blink. Um, <laughs> I would say that Sonic Matt is in the top quartile or something uh, he always places in like the, the top fourth of players yeah and uh it's it's been really fun watching him play and grow as a player i'm worried that modern games the way he's playing them is giving him bad habits <laughs> <laughs> becoming weaker because of them mm -hmm. but you know he's still doing great yeah well you can always think that you know modern games always teach you something different so in the end, it will make him a more well-rounded player because you might be not you might be thinking to inside of a box sometimes and looking at different mechanics and looking at different things can help your play overall. Think, think we all just need six Street Fighter six or something. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to six because I don't much care for five. Right, as a big proponent of four. Though. Well, Same. let me let me be devil's advocate. Sure, sure. Five, five does teach you frame data. Five does teach you safe options, and it does teach you about not pressing big buttons all the time and being as safe as possible. No, so five, you five, should. Five is a game that has its own meta and is unique and is not a bad game. I don't like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's how I feel. Like it was, it was a game that esports generation. Um, it, it, a game designed to make every character somewhat viable. A game designed to give plenty of breaks for commentators and be stream friendly and all that kind of stuff. It's just the gameplay doesn't suit me. That's all. Yeah. Um, sure. But in regards to to Matt and Penelope and the other kids, uh, is there anywhere? Do you have any words for them on where they should take their games from here? Ooh, I mm. have not watched the matches specifically. I've only been seeing the social media. Mm -hmm. So I love the top three photos and the top ten mm. photos. So making that more, having coming out with their own style for that is what I'm looking for. <laughs> so you're, you're more on the marketing <laughs> yes, the presentation aspect. Yeah, and um, Matt, Matt is in the chat, I hear. Okay. Um, no, I think, I think so far they're... I mean, Matt is certainly improving a lot, so whatever he's doing, it's working for him. Mm -hmm. But I think if he wants to take it to the next level, definitely definitely watch high-level footage of, like, high-level Guile players mm -hmm. fighting whatever matchup you're having trouble with. Because I feel like, you know, playing the game is good, obviously. That's, that's first priority is playing the game and practicing. But I feel like at some point, you will hit a wall where you're like, you don't know how to get better. The things I'm currently doing aren't working as well as they used to. And I think at that point, you have to like kind of expand your horizon and see what other guy players are doing and the kind of strategies they're doing. Even if it doesn't fit your own personal play style, it's just good seeing players being more aggressive or more safe and in which situation and which matchup. It kind of helps open your mind to like different ideas you can try out. And then that way, when you go play next time, you can try out new things like, hey, this this round, 
I won't be so lame and throw sonic booms and just back away. I'll like try to play more aggressive and in their face and more footsies and all that kind of stuff. I'll do more walk of throws. Um, that's what I do. And uh, honestly, if you get bored with the game, it honestly helps to also play other characters. Because I feel like if you just play your own character, then you only know how to play Guile. But once you play other characters like Ken or Dictator or Dalsum, it really kind of forces you to, to play the game in a different way and use different strategies, which you can then apply to your own main character. And that's what I do with Dalsum. Um, I don't just play Dalsum, I play pretty much the entire cast just because I think it helps me improve my execution, combo ability. It helps me like learn um, player mentalities. Like if you're fighting a Ken, you don't know how they're playing or why they're playing, play Ken yourself and you figure out, oh, this is when I feel like they're gonna go for a walk of throw or an uppercut or short, short super or whatever. So I don't know, it just, just kind of helps expand your your knowledge of the game, which only helps you as a player overall. So yeah, my hit, my um, tips. And you, my, I, had, I had a follow-up question, but my mind just exploded at just the thought of trying to do short, short super. I don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> it's, it's really easy. That's what, that, and, I, and that's I, what you guys say, and that's what Nate says, and that's what Yuki says, and then I, I'm like, yeah, my hands don't do that. Chris, if it makes you feel any better, we used to make fun, fun of Eugene when he ability. So it might take longer for some people than others. Yeah, well, it's easy now, but he struggled in the beginning. He forgets. And, and so also, everyone have has you different seen my dictator no. Your combos are crispy <laughs> now, my love. Not the case when you first started. Well, I'm, I'm also I'm also always playing Dalsum, so it uh, it definitely <laughs> takes away from my practice. And I don't. I wish I could play every character. You know, I I'll play around. Basically, I play characters that I try to match my character, my opponent's skill level. So I'll play mm -hmm. a character that I'm not as good at to to give them good competition because I don't want to just you know be oppressive and wipe someone out. Uh, so course, that that yeah. ends up yes, no main December had me playing Fei Long. So I, I'll I'll learn <laughs> I'll learn other things uh, uh, slowly, but it just I don't commit a lot of time to practicing execution for a specific character. So. That, yeah, that, but that, it's, it's that still to your back. benefit to learn those characters. Yeah, yeah. and I and I, I am to a degree, <clears throat> to the mu as big a degree as I can, you know, while streaming, twelve hours a day and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's good because like it breaks up the monotony. It gets boring after you set with your main characters. You gotta like change it up a little bit and. Yeah. No, for stuff. for sure, for sure. Um, let's see. I know in the chat they wanted to ask if you would uh if you would play Fight K with us. What are your thoughts on Fight K two? So props out to uh, Arcadium. Uh, one of the things we used to do on Saturdays is do Super Turbo Saturdays with uh, what's this gamer tag again? Carl's Real Gamer Tag. Sir Give. Sir Give. <laughs> okay. Sir Give and Arcadium on Saturdays. So I love that there's kind of been like this separate kind of like niche crew playing online fighting games and using fight cage to do so mm -hmm. but you just have to remember that it is completely different so you like, don't I have know to tell I us play... we are suffering right now <laughs> like so, it, it it sucks i don't I, every time i play fight cade i am i am forced to and it sucks and it's it's like it's frustrating like like we have i could walk down the street and play in multiple versus cities super turbo the way it's meant to be played and everybody I need is right here, and I love them all, and I know them all, and they're in the chat right now, and like that's the way to play, and we know it, and we have it, and we feel it, and it's just we're just stuck here. So we're, we're making the best. We appreciate it, but oh my goodness. I had similar feelings when I was first playing on 5K. I completely understand your guys' frustrations and whatnot because I even still feel that way sometimes. So what I treat it as, and Eugene and, and Sergey gave me good advice at the time, is use it to learn matchups. You know, don't maybe take it as, as competitively as offline, you know, if you need to. Use it as a tool like anything else. Use it to learn matchups. You know, if you're like me, though, and you get really angry really fast, maybe pick a different character. Um, so with all the, with some of the lag spikes and whatnot. But again, it's a tool set like anything else. So use it to your advantage in different ways that, you know, make you feel good. So I'll talk about two points. One is that I, you know, even though a lot of us purists think it's it's, it's an inferior experience um, having Super Turbo online or emulated versus arcade, 
I come from the perspective that not everyone has access to arcade equipment, super guns, etc. So I think for probably the majority of players out there, if they have nothing else, if there's no local scene, if they don't have arcade cabinets, they always have um, FIK or uh, Reggie GPO, whatever these guys are using nowadays, um, to play and to practice. And even though it's not as good as arcade, it's at least something. And that something is enough to keep you motivated, keep you practicing. You still learn a lot of things, even playing online or emulated versions of Super Turbo. And I support that because I think um, for majority of players, they, they need something to play between, you know, going to majors and playing on arcade equipment. Mm -hmm. And I think Netplay is definitely a good option for that. And I always support it. Even though I myself don't play off IK too often, if like people ask me, generally I'll like show up, but um, I'm more of an offline player too. And uh, the second point I want to make is uh, in regards to Fightcade 2, which you mentioned. Um, so Fightcade was developed by a man named Poff, or Pau, uh, depending on how you call, want to call it, who lives out in uh, Barcelona. He has a programmer with him. And originally, his purpose of uh, making Fightcade was basically just to make GGPO Part 2. Not anything significantly upgraded. Just like mild UI upgrades, but to keep GGPO online, because at the time, GGPO went down um, for whatever reason. I'm not sure if Ponder ever cleared it up, but GGPO went down and there was no p way for people to play. So he made fight cage so that people could just keep on playing GGPO. And the issue with GGPO is that it worked fantastically when it first launched, but that was back in like 99. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that program was built to work on Windows XP on that system, which is why if you try to go play a fight game now, it's not as good because you're playing a program that was made in the 90s and hasn't really been updated since. And so um, I'll, I'll give you some slight insider knowledge, but basically paul has been really motivated lately to make fight K2 a bigger and better experience. Um, more importantly, he still used a rollback GGPO netcode that GGPO was uh, made for, but also updated to work so that it works better on Windows 7 and Windows 10, which is um, only good things for the community at large. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just want to tell people that like, yeah, uh, Fight K2 might not be super optimal right now, but they are working on it. So hopefully in the future, it'll be much more improved, That's especially nowadays now that we're all stuck at home. Yeah, yeah. it's good to hear. Uh, I feel, I honestly, <clears throat> I echo your thoughts. On it, like arcade is better, and it's clearly better. Not everybody has it. Like a player like Reno MD, stuck in Maryland, I don't think he has an arcade to play with. Mm -hmm. um, I want, I want to play Reno MD. I want to see him play and be competitive, and mm -hmm. uh, and and learn the matchups and know everything that you know, know enough to, to go to Evo and win it. Um, <laughs> like, and he came out to Spring Series too. So so like. Yes, I'm glad for every avenue of Super Turbo, and also, you know, yes, the arcade is definitely the best. And if you have it, support it for sure. For so, sure. For sure. so those, yeah. you know, in Austin, close to Texas Gamers Lounge, and and everybody in, in free play, free plays vicinity, you know, get out there and support your locals, or put FPA in your name and pretend you do. <laughs> <laughs> and like one more point, John. Like I love. I love what Eugene went into is like use what is, is at hand like just just for your guys' knowledge we used to play HDR classic on PS3 for all you tech heads out there you know that's awful it's got like lag and all this issues but it helped us learn matchups it helped us learn different aspects of the game so I just want to repeat like use whatever's at hand you know there's going to be people who are on the switch playing um 30th anniversary that's fine do what you have, use what you have, and then eventually, hopefully, it leads into supporting your local and arcade. Yeah, like, there's, there's no list of people that are primarily online players who are also really good now. Afro Legend started out as an online player. He didn't play too much of the arcades, but he played a lot on uh, the original Xbox and HDR Classic, and Dreamcast, and PS2. He's insanely good. Same with Damn Die. He had a local scene for, there for a while, too, but he's also practiced online. Person. Playing. How are we gonna get Afro MD. Legends playing again? Huh? How are we gonna get Afro Legends playing again? Uh, uh have more big tournaments with big with big payout. I mean, um, we're we're doing that. He didn't show up for for our uh, Spring Series thing. Yeah, I think um, uh, last I checked in, he's like focusing more on like real personal life stuff. Mm -hmm. So focusing on work. I know he has a girlfriend now, which is traditionally the killer of fighting game <laughs> careers. Is 
New girlfriend, new job is new significant what. other. Sometimes it can be a boyfriend. You just, <laughs> you you just teach him to play yeah. Super Turbo, am I right, Eugene? Huh? You just teach him to play Super Turbo, right, Eugene? That's yeah, I you. know, but you know, I you know, I, I do what I can about it. But you know, if he's shifting priorities, not a big deal. I'm sure he'll come back. He tends to come back in cycles. Yeah, Afro is cyclical. He also just went to Japan recently, so I'm one. You know, everyone handles the mountaintop differently. When you realize the mountaintop is a lot farther for you than you thought, so different people <clears throat> go through different motions when they realize, oh my, this is very far. Yeah, even when Afro came back for a little bit, came back. Because Tomo moved to California for a year, right? And he got really motivated to fight like high-level mm -hmm. Japanese competition again. And Tomo beat him at his first tournament in a long time at SCR twenty. I don't even know. <laughs> Seventeen, eighteen. Whatever. Yeah, he beat him um, at the Spring yeah. Series qualifier as well. Yeah, Spring Series qualifier, uh, SoCal, some year. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, I think it kind of comes and goes a wave. So hopefully he'll come back to us. But if not, there's plenty of new players hungry players willing to take the spot again mm -hmm. and uh yeah we'll keep motivating you guys to get better and hopefully beat us one day and that's what we do this for i always tell tanya i like training my competition it's not fun being a good player and winning all the time it's not interesting i'd rather just train people to beat me is this, and that way we can have better ma matches is this like a dulcum player thing because i certainly <laughs> all hate feel each other, this way like ourselves especially like, uh, it's funny, I tell people, like, you know, Dawson players are so calm and peaceful. Like, hell no. Dawson players have rage, deep, <laughs> deep seated personal issues. <laughs> and it's manifesting itself in Yoga Fire and Fury and Inferno. <laughs> like, no, Dawson players are angry inside. Are. <laughs> angry, angry people. You guys are Whereas real. Claw players are just usually calm, cool people who are scumbags in the game, but in real life, they're pretty nice people. So, talk to them. Tanya, are you are you surprised that you've gotten as good as you have at Super Turbo? Like, did you, did you when you when you hit the button, yes. did, were you thinking, uh, well, I'm just gonna be the best Honda player in the country, and that's how it is, and then I'm gonna move on to bigger and better things, and you know, in the year 2025, I will be the undisputed world champion. Oh man! <laughs> um, See, I said it first, and therefore, when it happens, they'll look at me like I'm a genius, and that'll be my some small piece of it. I don't know. I don't see you being satisfied anytime soon with your level of performance. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm very hard on myself mm -hmm. just because I'm a very competitive I, mofo. I've been, a, I've been in comp competitive sports since I was a young kid. So I sadly have that mentality of like, I don't know if I'll ever reach the mountaintop because I love the competitive grind so much. Also, I talk hella trash talk. <laughs> <laughs> I trash talk her all the time. I'm like, I, so I, I feel the same way. I certainly understand <clears throat> how you feel, Tanya. Um, I never really want to give myself credit. Uh, sometimes I, I get to the top of the mountain, like I said, and I get bored and I leave. I just don't want to be on that mountain anymore if, it, if that's, if that's the way it is. Um, so I, I know what it, what it's like to, to not, to not respect your own game. So that's, if, if I am over effusive in my appraise of anybody and everybody, uh, that's why, because um, for whatever stock you put into to me as a player, um, I will say that like I respect the games incredibly of everybody I see in front of me. Um, wait, I see Beltran too. Okay, everybody I see in front of me. Oh, abort, 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 abort mission, abort. <laughs> <laughs> no, but real talk, Beltran's game has gotten so much better. It's making me go, oh. <laughs> like I have to like make sure I play my best against. I know him. I have to like try really hard with Ryu to be Beltran. It's annoying. <laughs> yeah. I just want to phone it in, but you both taught me well. Yeah, I have to try against you, damn it. Sucks. I like messing around. I can't do that around you no more. <laughs> I'll, I'll teach you the way. You don't have to try that hard. <laughs> no, Dalzo, that's a that's a dumb matchup. <laughs> right. Not I'm not disagreeing with you. <laughs> so Chris was being prophetic about five years from now, and I've always said that the free play arcade group is, uh, you know, always is going to eventually get better than LA. So I'm going to make a prediction. Yeah, they're on the up and, up and for basically sure. say that the Texas free play crew, if you guys continue on the track you're on, you'll definitely start to beat the bigger scenes like LA and well, hold uh, on time. We got our own LA handsome boys. Well, oh, the handsome boys are good, good folks. The handsome boys, we gotta train them up. I, but I literally there. could see, instead of it just always being 
West Coast versus East Coast, I could easily see it being like more of an equilateral triangle mm -hmm. of like, you know, the best is now in Texas. No, the best is now here, you know? So thank you guys for putting all that work in because I, I definitely see that for the future if you guys continue. I definitely think it's, 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 it's SoCal, it's East Coast, it's Texas and Chicago. Yeah. Even though the Chicago, Chicago guys haven't traveled too much, they are really good players. They are. And I want to see them travel more and, and make a name for themselves. Yeah, no, we, I know they feel like they're the best player in the country too. Well, it's it's you know they they are they are frustrating not them. Um, like we were getting them out the spring series, you know, April seventeenth through nineteenth. We had a place mm -hmm. for Jiggly Norris to stay. We had a place oh. for Arshad to stay. They would have been here. Um, mm -hmm. So oh, it's just, just part of the the tragedy of all of this. <coughs> um, so I I definitely feel the same way uh, as you that like if we keep and we got to get free play back open again and if you'd like to help anybody uh freeplayinc.com slash save the arcade uh we can uh you can help in in monetary ways or help sh share the stream uh we have to get our arcade back open and alive and support it once again uh through the end of all this but if we do yes we should catch up in some way um and be competitive with you guys um and i think we need to do that like even if i don't whether I want to beat LA or not, it seems irrelevant to me because we'll never get competitive with Japan, you know, on our own on islands on the east, east and west coast, and and a couple of fight K players in between. Like the more we play together, the more we get together at Combo Breaker or Spring Series or whatever major, um, and play each other, uh, we rise everybody up. Like if if Texas ever overtakes you in LA, then that's the best thing that could possibly happen to LA because you guys are all badasses and you would catch us back up again. You would catch us again. It would motivate you to get out to Don's more and play together uh, because why is Texas humiliating you, right? Like, it needs to happen. Why is Belichick beating you? <laughs> yes. Could you imagine? Could you imagine could how? Could you imagine Belichick beating us? No, but, but if it does happen, could you imagine how little tanya would let you would ever forgive you like you it would just be it'd just be beltran's picture well another beltran picture up on the refrigerator the entire time like you got to beat this man and, and it would be back to the grind and well, you would have no, the i would have the gif of saget laughing and then put beltran's face on top and just i've got that gif <laughs> no, i've got that gif nice yeah. Well, like it's already <laughs> it's already happened though. Jesus beat Eugene in tournament, so like it's yeah, it's it's, like, it's it's shorter than you guys realize. And I I agree with you, Chris. Like it will just make us better over time, help each other out, and like it it will continue the cycle. And the mountaintop will get we'll get that much closer to Japan's mountaintop. What's the yeah. saying? A rising tides raises all ships. Yes. Something like that. But yeah. like, yeah, if, if you guys get better, that means we get better. Right. So it's I've never, my attitude in Super Turbo has never been, oh, I hope I get good and just dominate everybody. You well, know? That's, not, that's not fun and interesting. I want everyone to get good so that it forces me to get better. And then, you know, the back and forth begins. Yeah, I hope we're not where we're, I hope we still have some place to go as a nation of Super Turbo players. Because, you know, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to fly over five Japanese players and have them be five of the top eight. I, I want to, yeah. I want to fly over, fly over five Japanese players and show them around Dallas and then, um, you know, Tanya beats some 3 in tournament, and and they have something to look forward to. The secret is to feed them some Cadillac before a tournament. That's the, <laughs> that's the power. Uh, Get that meat coma going. Bel Beltran can can be in charge of the the food runs before the tournament. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I got all the food spots on lockdown here. Yeah, no, I was I uh, Jeremy wanted to take us out to the Cadillac when we went out there, so I'm really really looking forward to that. But now I don't even know if the Cadillac's gonna be open after all this, so. It's true. We'll it's true. We, we don't know what's going to survive. Um, you know what? what, though? I think we're strong enough. I think Cadillac's strong enough. I think a lot of people in this world are strong enough. And some things will survive and some things won't. But you know what? I think we'll always find a way through. Is free play going I, to make it? Uh, life finds a way. Life finds a way, Chris. There you go. <laughs> we, life finds a way. Life finds a way. We won't That's stop. What? We won't stop. Can't We're, stop. Won't stop. <laughs> we will. We 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 are opening as a to-go restaurant, and I am volunteering to del delivery drive on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and out of Richardson. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes to get the arcade back open again, that is what we're yeah, going man, to do. Sell toilet paper and hand sanitizer. Do whatever we got. To we do. are. Yeah. Have whatever you got to do. Yeah. So. Um. I think you guys have enough 
foresight, and I think you guys have enough ingenuity and then thinking around the box. You are a Dawson player, so I think I think Chris, you're gonna get through this, and if you can bring free play along with it, definitely. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, does anybody else have any other questions? I know Arthur and uh, and Beltran are in the chat. I'm so glad you asked. Oh, here we go. Whoa! Whoa! Joining us we now. Workers. We got workers in the chat. From Guile Stage, it is none other than Noun Proper. <laughs> he does let me gossip. <laughs> I didn't realize this. <laughs> well, uh, I know we mentioned him earlier. When was the last time you saw Muffin Man? How's, how's he doing these days? Oh, it's been. It's been uh, we've texted him a lot. We haven't physically seen him in a while. I know he's been busy lately because he works at Santa Monica. So me right now. So. He has a full time job in the last couple years. He's got a full time job. He's got a new girlfriend. Allegedly. Yes, yeah, significant other that we're supposed to meet up with, but we can't now for social distancing. So maybe we'll do a Zoom session or a Discord session with everyone. Have a mm. double date online. Oh, oh, let's do it, Eugene. <laughs> All right. Someone else I haven't seen in a minute. Uh, what's the news with Mr. Igloo? Oh, Chris. Um, so Chris uh, moved from California back home to the Reno yeah, area. <laughs> really? Yeah, back to the Silver Mines, I guess, of wherever he's from. Wow. Uh, but I talked oh, to him okay. recently. He's doing okay. Um, but yeah, he's just he's just staying at home, playing video games like the rest of us are. Yeah, that sounds right. I yeah, should reach much. out to him. Yeah, but I, I think he'd like to hear from you, Nate. He's a uh, He's pretty lonely out there, Reno. So we, we, we try to keep in contact every now and then. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Uh, send, send him. Send him. Send me his contact info as well. Um, yeah, Will because I, I I may know him. I may not know him that well, but you know he he is responsible for Team Chris Delp defeating Team Michael Beltran, despite me gifting Afro Legends to Team Michael Beltran. I remember Ooh. remember I took I took you L Trouble as my first pick, not not Afro Ooh, Legends. How you feel, Beltran? Huh? Uh, you know, yeah. there's time to there'll be a time and place. To... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but. So... Oh. But but Igloo like it didn't come down to 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 Eugene or me because Igloo just mopped the floor with everybody. So um, if if I had everything that I wanted, um, I would have made a featured game for Spring Series this year, um, Vampire Savior, because I know how good Igloo is. Because I would love to have him here. That being said, I didn't want to take away from the Vampire Savior, Savior scene. Because Makai mm -hmm. Cup is an excellent Vampire Savior tournament that it happens mm -hmm. annually right around Spring Series, so that that's kind of put a kibosh on it. We do have a we did have a Vampire Savior tournament planned for it, but not not all the the big big uh, money prizes and stuff. We didn't want to take away. I would love to have Igloo out here. Love to. Oh yeah, the Vampire scene in general—they're really good people. And to back and to add some more information, um, it glues out in the Nevada area, um, in the Winnemucca, uh, in a town called Winnemucca. Okay. So, um, but yeah, give him a give him a shout out. Give him. A, I know he'd like to hear from people. Yeah. So. Big big fan of Mister Igloo. What are we doing on time? Are Are you guys still on time? I don't time? have work till four, and I can always push. It. I have a. So. About for the stream, or do we have time? How's the schedule? You you ask all the questions, Nate. All right. Uh, so yeah, I have at least two like kind of spicy questions. So Ooh. Um, spicy ocean, oh, <laughs> ocean oh, so, mushrooms. <laughs> so I know um, you guys are active on Twitter, particularly uh, Miller Times. Really big on Twitter, right? So uh, you guys follow FGC Dad? Yeah. So, yes. What did you think of his uh, April Fools? Oh, I did not see that. I went off Twitter on April <laughs> Fools because I was going to mute a bunch of people and not be friends with a bunch of people. So I avoided Twitter in general on April Fools. On April oh, Fools, I think I think that's fair. Uh, Eugene, did you see what the what is April Fools? Yeah, well, it's, see, this is a little tough for me because I know who runs the account, um, and so I know it's two people that run the account, and I would like to think I'm. I'm a really good friends with one of them, or not really good friends, but like really good, you know, like we talk to each other and I like her a lot. So I, I don't know who wrote it. So that's the other thing you have to keep in mind is, you know, account like that is written by at least two different people. So you really don't know. Um, you really don't know who wrote it one and then two or, and a lot of things can be lost on that. 
but Eugene's looking right now because he looks spicy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some, someone's gonna have to fill in so, the audience, including me. So FGC um, Dead is normally yeah, a um, motivational tw Twitter um, um, account, mm -hmm. and they usually have really good um, things to like help you still training. Um, and then again, it's just kind of like taking place of. Um, of like, hey, I'm here to support you and whatnot. There's some really good ones. And then sometimes the dad turns into Tatsui no dad. He gets a little mad at you. Mm -hmm. But it's 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 a parody account at the end of the day. And it's 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 a motivational one, usually. Um, but Nathan, could you add more to it, maybe? Uh, so, FGC, that, yeah, like, he, he gets really inspirational sometimes. I'm talking about him as if he's, like, a real person. Fills <laughs> <laughs> a hole for a long time. <laughs> no, so um, so something that's interesting about it is, uh, and this has been like sort of a hot topic, I guess, in the past, is the profile pic for FGC Dad is a uh, African American guy, like older African American guy, mm -hmm. with glasses, and um, his his April Fool's joke was he like changed to this kind of uh, nerdy looking white guy, and he's like this really. Like his diction changed completely. He was like, uh, hey, Scout, this is totally rad or whatever. Just like he wasn't FGC dad. He wasn't cool, you know? Gotcha. <laughs> so, <laughs> just, you can still see the tweets, but it's back to his normal profile pic. And he's just like, oh, I just had the weirdest dream. So it turned into, oh, into Jeremy okay, Golden. Okay. Oh, yeah, that kind of puts things in context now, maybe. So. Yeah. <laughs> Boke says he talked like me for a day. No, no, I, I, I suspect he talked like Jeremy <laughs> Golden with bad puns and stuff. St. Dad is gonna be. A... Yeah. yeah. So do so we have more? Me, I know the two people who run it, and I, I, there's so much more context to this because I know more information. Mm -hmm. But I'm yeah, not sure if it's my like story it. to tell, my story to share. Well, I guess I guess we have to invite FGC Dad to the to the to the podcast, man. <laughs> <laughs> to the world's longest uh, if, stream. If you start doing a Skull Girls tournament, you basically can. Okay, there you go. Write that down. I hadn't planned on asking, but since we're on the subject of podcasts, sort of, mm -hmm. uh, how about Caesar? I'm kind of asking you about old SoCal people. I've seen. Oh. Have, you, have you heard from him lately? So actually, Chris talked to Caesar the most we, when we had the. Tournament. Okay, Free so I will. Yeah, he was I at the qualifier. Him. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I heard about that. Uh, uh, yeah, so he's, he's doing good. I don't know if he's still planning on doing more podcast episodes because I liked him and Tony did an episode with him. Yeah. It's... Uh, but no, he's doing well. He's just busy with work and I know he coaches a girls' soccer team, however mm -hmm. he's from. So he's just doing that kind of stuff, but he's good so far. So I, I guess um, I did talk to him a lot and I do have, have uh, I, I guess, I don't know. I, don't, I have my perspective. Um, I thought uh, Mongolo Robo Talks was a was a great uh, potential thing for Super Turbo. Um, making more content is 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 a good thing. Um, mm -hmm. There isn't a, a Super Turbo podcast. I think that I would like one. That's I'm doing one now, more or less. Um, Basically, it's what you're doing. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm 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 yeah. I'm trying to pick up the mantle. But you know, for everybody, everybody who wants to to, to hold that mantle, like I think it's a good thing. I know. Um, some people privately in Dallas have reached out to me about putting together a, a podcast for Super Turbo, and I, I am 100% supportive. I just only have so much time unless the world ends, and I have all the time in the world. Um, so I, I talked to, to him about it, and uh, I told him how, how highly I thought of his, his podcast and how good it was for the nation's Super Turbo team uh, scene. In fact, it's, it's in English, so... It's for, for everybody who speaks English across the world. Um, all of their Super Turbo scenes would be beneficial if he could keep it going. Um, and to that end, I, I, I said, you know, he was concerned. He is concerned about the time it takes from him. For him, you know, he has kids. Um, you know, he's a soccer dad. Um, he's coaching the team. He's a busy – he has, has a professional life as well. So um, those are all valid concerns, and he was – bummed about the the amount of editing is required and i told him look i will call you up you know as the guy who's running spring series i would be happy to call you up and we could do an extended interview and you could just like turn it over like that and you don't need to edit it at all just get episodes out there um 
I would still be happy to. Um, but at the same time, uh, the apocalypse happened. <laughs> so uh, that, that put a kibosh on that. But also, it's a good opportunity since the apocalypse and we're all at home. Here we are on Discord. <laughs> we can do a podcast right now if you really want. So, uh, now I just texted Caesar and I'm checking in with him. So, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> hey, cool. Yeah, right on. Yeah, no, I, like in it. fact, I would love to have him. I'll put it on my list to, to, to text Caesar and get him on the show as well if I can. Uh, I assume he has more free time than normal right now. Yeah, now's the optimal time. And also think of it this way. I hate editing as well. And uh, when I when we did our ST tutorials with Arcadium back in the day, those were like completely unedited, just uploaded and just let it rock. Mm -hmm. People still love those dumb things. I hate those tutorials, <laughs> but like I when you mess comments about those tutorials. Um, so even as poorly made as the ones we made, people still want more of it. So yeah. I think there's definitely a need for content, even if it's not super polished. Just put something out there and see how people respond. And you know, God, you're making me it. feel like total crap about normal though, because I've, I've been totally not motivated to write them lately. Like I don't, I, I want them to be like a certain quality. But now that you're saying, like, oh, just put them out. No, it's fun. Like I, I don't have a complaint about your content. Like I love your content. Yeah, I, you I put love one out. This... <laughs> oh, sorry, faded out there. But yeah, I, I absolutely love normal of the week. I, I, I feel like your quality is, is good, and it's, it's, it's. It's amazing, and just having more content. Like, if Normal of the Week went away, Super Turbo would lose something. And, and, I'd be and, sad. Yeah. So, yeah, so, I think yeah, I'm great. I have no problem it. with them. We, we love what you're doing, Nate. It's, we love unabashedly what you're doing. Um, and if, and if, you, if you feel unmotivated for a month or two or whatever because you've done so many normals, like, we still <laughs> love it. We still love it. We still love it. Look, there's special of the week, super of the week, <laughs> and a frame, at frame of the week. Coming. <laughs> there's no shortage of content here you can draw from. That's true. Yeah. Um, we, we have Ian uh, in our chat saying he's he was a big fan of the uh, ST tutorials that y'all put out. See, I told you, people like those dumb things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He says, I want the rest of the characters. I know it's the most raw, unedited content. We go on so many tangents. <laughs> We're never on topic. I'm like, God. Well, every, like everything is something. And and Sorry, you're, you're breaking up a bit. Sorry. Uh, okay. We go on a lot of tangents yeah. on those tutorials, and they end up being like 40 minutes long sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, please, Muffin Man, please. Can we please <laughs> talk about this content? Yeah, so even my poorly zero edit tutorials, <laughs> people like those dumb things for whatever reason. I don't even like them, but people respond well to them. And, ha and, it, and those have way less polish than your normals of the week, I promise you. So yeah, people like content. But I guess I should continue. You should. I've had people specific. I've traveled without Eugene. Sign me up. And Would they love go, it. where's Eugene and why hasn't videos? <laughs> no joke, I get at least one comment like a month, if not every other saying, hey, I like these, where are more? I'm like, there are no more! I've made as many as I could. But I should at least finish the characters off. Yeah, if, if you would, it would be a, a, a benefit to the entire scene. It's a lot of work, I understand, so not not well, trying try, to volunteer try to you for it, it, but yeah, it, it would be helpful. Every, every little bit would be helpful. Uh, for me, uh, I'm raising up the flag right now and, and saying, like, if, if, if DFW people want to make a Super Turbo podcast or I can help in any way, uh, I want to help. I, I am literally, literally very much doing everything I can. Um, so I can't I can't conceivably do more, um, even though I want to, and I feel like it's a good thing. And for anything, any doors I can open, if it's get on this, if if you wanna if you want a time slot while I'm stuck at home, uh, to just talk super turbo, uh, or whatever, like let's do it. I'm getting Yoga Boy on. I'm gonna say the same thing then next week, which is you know he did uh, the X News, and I I don't know if he's released an X News in a while. Um, yeah, I miss X News. Yeah, but like. I had already talked to him, like, if we could synopsize X, X News in a podcast, if Caesar's gonna gonna not do it, then somebody should do it. So, yeah, get it out That'd there. That'd be More ideal, better. yeah. And it wouldn't even take, take that long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can like find a way. We can tops. find a way. Yeah. You're bringing special guests, obviously. It's mm -hmm. pretty easy nowadays on Discord, so, yeah. For sure, for well, sure. Well, you're doing it now, Chris, in your own way. You know, you're not necessarily doing a podcast, but you're doing a stream. 
and I so will highlight it and I will put it under talk shows and podcasts. No, I, I'm not doing it uh, in, in naivety. I'm, I, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, for sure. Well, I guess what I'm saying is we all have our different avenues. Like I like short, little, sweet little videos. I like Twitter a little bit more. You know, now like his writing skills are have always been impressive. I remember reading his first blog when he went to Japan. Like that helped us go to Japan. So he goes writing more and so he does Facebook more. You know, Caesar does podcasts and maybe some other people might do it because they're better um, using more audio tracks. So we all have our different. I think as long as you just keep putting out content and you keep sharing it in different ways, it will it, it helps the scene in general. Do what you can with what you got, you know? No, for sure. Actually, Nate's first um, tra- post he put on STR about his first trip to Japan it inspired me to like make a log of my stuff and keep track of which arcades are open and Yenna cosplay. Aww. Yeah, that, 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 that idea came from Nate. After that. I remember that, yeah. I didn't post it. But <laughs> 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 I, have, I have a little full of info I never put out. And, that, and that's how you reverse <laughs> the whip on somebody asking you uh, spicy questions. <laughs> oh, no. that, that, that's not even that I bad. one of my spicy questions. I know, that wasn't even that bad. <laughs> he was like, so tired. What do you hate about you? <laughs> that's, that's really spicy. Since we're on travelogues, I want to segue into... Uh, this This is directed to, to both of you. So in your travels, who has been... I realize this is kind of a loaded question, but... um, In your travels, who has been the toughest Dalsum that you've faced? Toughest Dalsum is Tanya. Um... Um, none of them because he's still my freaking Achilles heel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but there was that one that beating dolphins left and right. They were lining up to take you out. It was beautiful. You know what I really enjoyed lately? <clears throat> um, now I almost called you by your real name again. Um, was a uh, was the European dolphins because so what was cool about the Japanese dolphins was. They were they were fun to play. We also did like so in so in Japan what was cool is we did a tournament where all Hondas on one team and all Dalsums on one team. And so we had Ooh. to fight each other. And it was cool because I think that day, I don't remember who won. Maybe it but it was like tie for tie. Like even some of the best Hondas could only like kill two Dalsums. So that was really impressive because Japan has this big range of like defensive, offensive Dalsums. It was that was a real treat. But with at least the French tournament we went to, that specific one, all the French dolphins I played were all offensive. And I was like, what is this? You know, like, <laughs> what dimension am I in? <laughs> what is, what uh, land is this where all the dolphins are, are offensive? France, I, man. It's just it, was, French it was like all Af- Afro coals, like, <laughs> but in different weird ways. It was a very, it was very interesting to play that. <laughs> but it was cool for me personally because like we could like trade notes like me to a cock and viola we could like trade notes on how we play each other we played a lot of mirror matches that's a really good test of how dalsam plays and like when me and viola first yeah. started playing we were like doing typical dalsam rushdown stuff and then towards the end of our set we both would just like sit there because we both like knew how we, how we played so it was like if you do this you're gonna counter so i'm not gonna do anything so it was weird like playing a dalsam mirror and we sit there like pump baking like come on drill Drill so that I can drill you. <laughs> and it was a really cool, like, meta for um, dolls and play. But no, we learned a lot from each other. And, like, um, and I played Spinal Blood. And Spinal Blood plays Biolo a lot. Spinal Blood's a, a Saga player. And he's like, I don't think this matchup's that bad. I, I can, like, do pretty well against Biolo. And I'm like, no, this matchup is impossible for Saga. <laughs> like, I don't know what they're doing in France, but I promise if you play me, I'm not going to lose. I'm not, not going to try that hard. Like, okay, let's play like a first to three. It's like sure. So I won three zero, and he was like, "Holy shit, this is a dumb match." Like, yeah, this matchup is stupid. If you play it optimally and like don't do anything, like there's nothing Sag can do to threaten Dalton. Horrible. Yeah. So it was cool trading notes. Um, for me personally, the best Dalton I fought was definitely uh, Hakase in Japan. I figured you'd say it. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> one he has a very different style than me. I'm I'm closer towards like Gion, so mm-hmm. like uh, a lot of guys compare me to to Gion style. But like I can say, is much more advanced and like doing crazy combos. So I'm trying to add more of that to my game currently. What was that okay. now? Uh, I was saying just because he's uh, Giant's color too. Oh yeah. Yeah, that wasn't intentional. I just think it's like it's by far the coolest color Dalsum has. Um, but yeah, more and more the more Dalsum I played, I like studied all the Dalsums like Afro Cole and 
Alex Wolf and KK Wine, all those guys, and just eventually my style came closer to John's. The Wolf Brothers. Which is why we're, we're like we're them. like best buddies, being giant. That's my that's my teacher right there. I was looking forward to seeing him at a Spring Series, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's 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 tough. It's tough. I miss the Wolf Brothers. Holy crap, as we just went through history right there. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wolf, <laughs> John. Okay. Uh, I could say French players, everybody. We, we fought a lot of players. I think we're more qualified than most. Good who's not. We played for We're, we're all the all. So. Oh! oh my God. Sonic Matt needs to keep playing. Sonic yeah, Matt does yeah. need to keep playing. Okay. Sonic um, Matt, if you're listening still, Sonic Matt, I want to play you. Someone get a, get his uh, his computer set up. Let's let's play. Oh yeah, man. It's all in the mail. I think um they said it's it's gonna come next week. It, his getting a new computer. Oh sweet! Like he's getting a deal, dude. So, um, okay. Sweet. Next question. So, uh, <laughs> what are your favorite matchups to observe? Like, I, I know uh, Ryu Mirror is like kind of a crowd favorite, and Ryu Guile. But do you have any others that you like to watch? Um, did you say Mirror specifically, or just any matchup? Any matchup. Oh, that's a long list. Tanya, you want to go first? I don't necessarily. <clears throat> Uh, matchups well see for me matchups mm, i don't really put a s- stock in necessarily matchups i actually put more stocks into players like i love the history of players okay. so i love i love player matchups more like for me specifically like i love promo versus like ultra combo because i know how long promo has been playing and how good he is as a blanca player and i know ultra combo how intense and how Maybe not as long he's been playing, but he's always been, you know, at that high echelon too. So it's more about knowing yeah. each player's background. I was like, ooh, this match is going to be good. Like, I kind of, I stray more into yeah. that, not necessarily matchups. So um, I kind of avoided the question. <laughs> <laughs> Entirely. <this fight. laughs> That's okay. Eugene's going to give me an answer too. Uh, but I like so many matchups. It's going to nail down special ones. Um, I like Honda Dalsum. I like Dictator versus Claw. Okay, I let's like... talk about that one. What, what do you like about that one? D- Dictator Claw? Which matchup, Nate? Dictator Claw. Um, I like it because uh, a lot of it comes down to mobility. I feel like it comes, um, down, to it comes down to like mobility. Okay. Um, yeah, if, if, you can, if you can maintain air control. That, that, right. that player usually wins. Dictator has decent footsies, but like he has that like safe light kick uh, meaty that he can't counter. So there's a lot of mixes off that. Um, yeah, I I love fighting it because I feel like uh, Dictator has really good options once Claw goes to the wall, and like none of them are like guaranteed. Oh, do this when he goes to the wall. Like if you have like a Ken right. versus Claw, if Claw if they're if both characters are standing, Claw goes instantly walk forward fierce uppercut. Like it's an easy punish. But Dictator, you gotta be a little more crafty. Well, that's just Dictator in general. But like, you have to use Psycho Crusher, you have to use Slide, you have to use Crouch First Anti Area, you have to use Jump Jab, Jump Medium Punch. Um, because once you get knocked down, you can eat a lot of mix up damage. But on the same token, like, Dictator is very competitive in mix, mix ups and footsies and all that kind of stuff. I don't know, it's just fun to watch. It's very dynamic. I don't like matchups where both characters just sort of pretend to play Street Fighter until someone screws up. That's like. <laughs> Like a block of mirror is the worst match of the game. It's yeah, just like, that's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, it's horrendous. <laughs> it's worse than Chun Chun. At least Chun Chun, you like dirt bad do Chun things and things happen. But block of block, it's just it's just painful. Face roll the buttons. Yeah, it's like it's it's uh mirror matchups where like the the character can't do what they do is really frustrating to watch. Yeah, it's like block can't do block of things to block of, so it's kind of dumb. But like uh, Ryu Ryu Gal Gal, pretty much it can do what they. Do. But it, Nate, you're gonna have me here all the time. So you, gotta, <laughs> you gotta focus in a little more. I will spend all day talking about like everything. Yeah. Okay, what's, what's one more matchup that you like? What's one matchup that I like? What? Yeah, one more. He, he wants one more for the for the for the oh, record. Oh, okay. What's a fun one? You you I mean, guys Honda are gonna buy Dalton, me a chance Honda to use the is so, the one I probably so know keep the, it going a little bit. Honda Dalton is one I like a lot, not just because of Tanya, but because like I fought like Kusamundo and other Hondas. It's just a really enjoyable matchup. It's very dynamic. What? So hey, are we not clear anymore? Because I know sometimes our router goes in and out at this time. Uh, you, a little bit choppy sometimes. I, I wasn't sure if it's because are are you guys up? 
working off your phone or uh, like computer or? We're in a wired connection, but I've noticed our internet will sometimes go out. So it's okay, okay. right now, but that's what I was asking. So sometimes okay. we have to reset it. I'll just lean closer, I guess. <laughs> um, I don't know. Time to pick a matchup. I'll talk about it. <laughs> I can't. You What's know what? one that you like? That's the question. <laughs> like... You know what matchup I miss watching now? Really good high level grappler matches. So like a Zangi versus anyone, a T Hawk versus anyone, even hybrid grapplers like Honda. Okay. Uh, uh, let's, say, Geef, there you go. You got it. let's say Ryu versus Geef. I love that matchup a lot too. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Um I don't know. I feel like it's 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 contentious. Because I was talking online about it, and like uh, Ultra Combo said it's pretty even. And then whenever I talk to like really good Ryu players or Geef players, what, did, uh, Geef wins. what did Ultra Combo say? It's it's pretty. I think he says he thinks it's pretty even, like a pretty five okay. five matchup. But like whenever I talk to right. people or like me myself, Geef slightly wins that at least six four, if not seven three. So I think the fact that is it's there is no set number that people will like agree on. It's it's an indication it's a really good matchup. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Ryu Geef is like just pure footsies as greatest. I feel like it depends on uh, what Tanya was saying too. Is like players have different styles, right? So it's like maybe um, I think uh, there's Gunze focuses more on footsies, it seems. Mm -hmm. And then like maybe uh, TMF is more about like walk off SVDs or getting landing a super or whatever. Yeah, um, but again, I, th I think that's a good sign of a good matchup. But player style is like a much bigger um the how lopsided the matchup is yeah so i think it's i think it's one of the greatest matchups in st but it's funny because who, who was i talking to i was talking to sasori about this mm -hmm. i was like how do you feel about ryu versus geef and then he's like okay this is this is this is how you play it first you do this and then after a while geef will do this so you do this to counter it and he's <laughs> he's telling this to me as he's playing it's weird. <laughs> he was like fighting. I don't know who it was. It might have been like, I don't know. I forgot who was playing. Tontanki or Tommy. I don't know who it was. But they were getting really mad because Asori was like not even trying and still beating him. And then I was like, okay, like I understand the strategy. Do you think Ryu wins his matchup? He's like, oh no, it's an 8 2 matchup. I'm like, what? <laughs> How is this an 8 2 matchup for Geef and you're like dominating every play? And he's, he said, uh, Maya Kone is the only reason why it's 8 2 because he would never lose wow. to a Shoto. So, like, it's weird how they approach matchup, but yeah. also a good sign that, like, it's a very debatable matchup. Right. Okay, I need to calm down, because I'll keep talking. Right, next question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think even, even Ultra Combo learned in his past uh, trip to Japan, there's just, like, there's nothing in the world like uh, Japanese Zangiefs. They're just, like, such an anomaly. <laughs> it's, like, kind of changes yeah, how you think about the game. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I tell everyone, you do not understand Super those guys are playing a whole different planet than we are. Yep. Uh, like everything you thought about Super Turbo, they will. There's a player there who will defy your expectations and understandings of the yeah. game. Yeah. I compare them to like, you know, when the Super Saiyans or when the Saiyans first came to Earth in Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> like, oh my god. Shit. He's like, all right, I'll take on. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> child. <laughs> That's what it feels like. So. Uh... <laughs> Are all about like making DBZ comparisons and just like oh, there's like they have a a, a one to one for like every character. I'm like oh, who's, who's this player? He's like oh, that's this character. That's this person from Dragon Ball. I'm like oh, I guess it makes sense. It's totally true. It's totally true. That's so funny. Like, I'm sure Tian was feeling so. I do pretty good at doing. It. Well, it's just, now. I... That's how it feels like. <laughs> okay, I so need to make. Yeah, sorry, I you guys. You guys are dropping in of... and out with the with the. Oh, we are a little, oh, a little bit. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I think what I need to do is make like a gif, like a, a noun said, and basically put people like different countries as the different DBZ characters. That's a mean way to happen. <laughs> if <you're> talented. <laughs> All right. That's actually a perfect segue. So I have a, a like a little question, and then my last spicy question. So, uh, little question: Any progress on your wedding date? No. <laughs> that was the easiest question <laughs> to date. Um, yeah, it's time to tell a story. It's not much of a story. So I was supposed to start planning this year. I I'm actually looking at this giganto 
Bride's essential wedding planner freaking binder that my sister-in-law gave to me. And I was ready to start. And then this coronavirus stuff happened. And now I might need to wait or think about it in a different way. You know, do the best you can with what you have. So I had to focus on work recently because I, I said earlier, I had to get a lot of my systems online. Um, but it's starting to wind down and maybe we can now spend a little bit more time focusing on that. But it's, it was definitely a big mix up. This coronavirus, the biggest oh, yeah. mix up I've gotten. Um, part of it was that we held like an engagement party and then uh, that was kind of stressful. So it kind of like took the wind out of our sails. We we're like, man, this isn't as fun as I thought it'd be. It's whatever. <laughs> uh, two, like uh, neither me and Tanya really care all that much about getting married. Like, it'd be cool, but I think we're both on the same page. And, like, if we get married tonight, let's say, nothing's going to change tomorrow other than our taxes. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe our names and, like, our families would be happy. But, like, as far as me and Tanya, we're going to be the same people before or after marriage. Mm -hmm. And part three was that if you try looking at, like, prices for, like, wedding stuff, like venues and flowers and, and catering, ooh, it's expensive. It's expensive. It's pretty bad in California. I, mean, I imagine it's bad everywhere else. Like... If you want to do like even like a, like a small wedding with the like fifty people or less, it's still gonna cost you at least several thousand dollars, if not ten, twenty thousand dollars. So yeah, money is a big factor because like me and Tanya rather just into a house or travel to Japan some more. Yep. So. <laughs> Bokai has some 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 comments for you that seem seem apt as he is uh he's married. Uh, wedding planning sucks, but bottom line, make it about you two. Uh, Leslie and I used to use it as an excuse to throw a party. Uh, the wedding was a foregone conclusion. Oh, thank Aww, you. Oh, that was that's well very worded. helpful. Um, that's that's kind of like how we thought of it. Like, yeah, but like at the same time, neither neither me or Tanya care a lot much about the wedding. <laughs> right. So it's like no matter what we do, it'll be for our families and friends, which is good because like they get a nice moment to celebrate our love or what. No, but focus on what book guy said. Like we I know. Just yeah, he says seriously. It. We went through almost exactly this, and and knowing yeah. them, yes, they are a very similar couple to you. Um, oh. Leslie plays a ton of games, and she's competitive. She does not play Super Turbo. Um, she's you two are you two, your couples dynamics seem very similar. So yeah. <laughs> oh, we're the California boat guys. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Look, think of it like this, my love. Let's just make it a party that we're happy with, and this and the side bonus is that we're getting married. But that means just going to Japan. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> Destination wedding at GSV Tuesday night. Um, That'd be sick. I know, right? It'll be a lot of smoke, but whatever. <laughs> oh my goodness! I can go. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the wedding dress will just smell of smoke for forever. Oh, it'll turn gray by the end of the night. It'll yes, it will. Fill with Japanese tobacco. <laughs> Just be that yellow tint of all candy cabs because they've been in the smoke. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Every, anyone who's bought a cab. Dude, it takes like a week of scrub down. Gone. Yes. Like, I'm getting secondhand smoke just, just smelling a cab. <laughs> it's rough. Anyways, that was an easy question, Nate. So you can go ahead with your spicy one. Okay, okay. So my last question. So you can only choose one. Oh, this is this for both of you. Shumai Sorry, you cut out the last end. What, what, what can we choose? Oh, you yeah. can only choose one. I, I feel like I've asked this uh, from you before, but I'd like to ask anyway. Uh, you can only choose one. Shumai or Hargal? <sighs> Shumai. Ooh, they're both good, though. They're similar, though. They're very similar. <sighs> yeah, Shumai, I think. Really? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, because like I don't know, like I find like the Japanese versions to be like compared to other Asian cuisines, they're, it's a lot, a lot lighter, not as heavy, not as greasy. It's fair. But, like okay. I'm a big Japanese, I'm a big Japanese guy anyway, so it shouldn't be that surprising. Yeah, I'm I'm a hog out guy myself, so just apples and oranges, I guess. Yeah, I'm not mad at it. They're like they're both super similar to the point where like. Yeah, but but, but apparently Ian's good. mad. The lesson here is eat more dim sum and or go to Japan. Eat pretty much, I think yeah. we can all agree on that. I'd agree. Yes. Agreed. That's a good philosophy in life. Yeah. Like, no matter what, uh, now I would have eaten both of them. If you <laughs> <laughs> right, of course, yeah. <laughs> I'm hungry now. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any more questions for us? We're here for you guys. That's all I've got for you. All right. That's, that's all I've got as well. Um, 
Yeah, uh, nothing new in the I, chat. Yes. I have a question for now. What's yeah, your sure. favorite meal awesome. of all time? Really like if you my had favorite to, meal of all time. Yeah, like let's say tomorrow's the the world is ending, so tonight is your last. Too late. Like, it ended like two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> what is like the best meal of your? What is your like best meal? What makes you happy? What brings you joy? Well. That's the tough question to answer. Um, mm -hmm. Pizza is my favorite food, but I don't know if I'd want it to be like my last meal, you know? It's, it's your last meal. <laughs> it's your last one. Something. It could be anything. Uh, do, you need, do you need time to think? I, I it, give it'd probably mine. be some, some kind of enormous calzone. Enormous I, I don't know calzone? how much more it's very pizza like. I can be. Okay, Italian. Okay, I see you. I see you. Okay. Right. I spent some time growing up in Louisiana, so for me, it's it's uh, give me the jambalaya, uh, a grilled catfish, and a uh, touffe, po' boy. Yes. Uh, no, not the po' boy. We could go. We could go uh, crawfish at touffe. That's that's good too. Just we're we're having many courses because it is the last meal after all. And, exactly. Uh, yeah. All out. All out, yeah. yeah I, I don't know. I don't know what the what the the dessert is. Something something tasty, but that's definitely on the the meal for me. Good nice. picks, Chris. Good picks. Nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about you, Tanya? We talked about this the other night, um, but for me, it would be my Portuguese cuisine that I grew up um, eating from my grandmother, which is called my ball. And so it would be uh, definitely like a linguiça dish of some sort, uh, fresh cheese that I ate in Portugal with her, and like like called this amazing green soup we eat. So kind of like have an nostalgia for me. Mm -hmm. What about you, Eugene? There's this restaurant next to my grandma's house in like a million different ways, and yeah that <laughs> like goose 10 different ways oh we got uh mega man x in the chat oh Anthony! Hey! What's up, Anthony? he made it finally i was actually I talking I'm surprised. we're never in the same place at the same time so T tony p said uh he, he was he was having he was getting buried by mega man x online uh last night i think it was oh. And he asked me and Turtle Power, maybe it was two nights ago, to, to come analyze the match and see if we could, you know, give him any pointers. Um, and I remember talking about, like, admiring how much how well he was using, I want to say it was, like, crouching light kick. Um, and then I was like, yeah, he's using it just like I use the Hicks jab. And then yeah. I was like, wait a minute. We, we have named Duck Jab after, after Anthony Hicks. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Like we yeah, literally, because make no mistake, he is the duck. So yeah, duck jab is mixed. Yeah. So so whenever we talk about Honor of Anthony, crouch yes. command jab from uh, from Dalsum, it's it's officially named in Dallas the Hicks jab, the duck jab. I love it. Any duck strong normal mm -hmm. is all Anthony Hicks. <laughs> but you want advice? Just don't respect Anthony. Just go in. Whoa, Just go in. Stop talking to Max Go brother. in. <laughs> I love Anthony. That's why I can talk trash about him. <laughs> the secret to beating Anthony is to not respect him. Go in, go ham. He'll never see it coming. <laughs> Anyways, I'm missing Anthony. I'm sad we can't meet up in Spring Series, but we'll have to postpone it for another day. Oh, uh, <sighs> it's tough. It's tough. I do have some ideas for the uh, wedding ceremony. Oh, do tell Hollywood. Do it, tell. It, it involves hiring a DJ at seven figures. <laughs> Seven <laughs> figures? Jeez. I, Not <laughs> six, five? God. You, you gotta pay the best for the best DJ, right? Right, Mike? Oh my god. Well, it better, I mean, it better be pesos or rubbles, because I don't. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Sure. I mean, hey, you know, my, my services are open for that. But <laughs> I did have an idea on maybe how to set up the, uh, you know, actual ceremony where, you know, instead of, I mean, you have your, you know, your aisle, you know, it's down the middle. You have, you know, the two sides of chairs, right? Well, you'll have the chairs, but you'll need room for, like, for each side of the aisle, a row of versus cities that you'll walk through, okay? Oh, I could oh, that'd be nice. You know, it's just a complete row of those, and then on the on the stage, if you will, you know, you have the, 
you know, you two, and then instead of like having groomsmen and bridesmaids, you just have a row of uh, astral cities just lined up on each side of you. Yeah. I like this idea. It might be hard for our audience to see flanked by Astro Cities versus Yeah. <laughs> you just have all that there and you know, there you go, man. That's how you do it. And then and then the uh the I guess the uh, dessert table, right? You gotta have the dessert table with the cakes and stuff, you know. You, mm-hmm. gotta, you just have a super gun set off right there too. Just random. There we go, you know, Tanya. You know, so in between cupcakes or something you can get a match in. Ooh. That'd there's, be nice, but like, also, who would let people? There's, there's, there's I, yeah, there's no way, Mike. We can't, we can't allow a super gun at this le- wedding. They need to be at Free Play Arlington, and we will have wow. the actual versus cities and a that stage. Plug up. <laughs> I like how Bell has put more effort and like thought this way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's anything this man is good at. It is wedding planning. I'm sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's right. Oh, yeah. I've been involved with a few, so yeah. A few, he says. I, I mean, not, not... not my own, but you know, <laughs> uh-huh, DJ. Uh-huh. <laughs> of course. We all know about your exploits in the Philippines. Jeez. Ooh. Now it's getting spicy. Now it's getting spicy. He doesn't like to talk about it, but there is there is a little Beltran out in the Philippines. Am I am I not am I wrong, yeah. Mike? <laughs> I'm... I've, I mean, there's people, yes, with my last name in the Philippines, but I've never <laughs> been to the Philippines. There you go. Metro. There you go. Jeez. That's nice. In case the FBI are listening, I got, I got, I got you. <laughs> oh, my God. Got you limitations and all that stuff. I, I understand. Don't worry about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I know Bel- Belcher is so quiet. He's like, I can't say anything about it's always a good day when I can make Mike Beltran speechless. I, I know. I, so I've never reproduced a child. Okay. <laughs> I think I. I think I have. I have drops that say say something to the the other. Otherwise, <laughs> here. Let me. Let me. I don't know if you guys can hear the drops, but here you go. My loins produce genetically <laughs> handsome humans. That's the nicest thing you said about Orlando. There you go. <laughs> it's very specific now, language. That <laughs> That was about my stepson Orlando. So that uh, uh, did stepson does this sound like stepson? My loins produce oh my <laughs> genetically <laughs> handsome humans. That's- there you go. Can, the can the, the prosecution. The, the prosecution rests. <laughs> this was about the wedding, not about we're, me. Mm-hmm. We're talking a lot about Belchan's loins here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there was that time, as Ian points out, that he murdered a small child. So. Oh, oh, whoa, what? Whoa. It, 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 it is true. What is going on in the stream? What is going on? What is he talking about? Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't murder a small child. Yeah. I mean, no. traditionally. No, that was me defeating a young child on the other side of the versus city one time. It uh-huh. just didn't go well for the, the young lad. That's all that mm-hmm. was. Okay, uh-huh. Beltran, we, we need to learn what's called sandbagging. I need you to repeat this term. I need you to look it up in the dictionary. A champion need... never stand back. No, this yeah. is this is how Mike rolls right here. Historically, Mike likes to beat up on little children. There you go. <laughs> Evidence. That's exhibit A to your trial. <laughs> Believe me, there is more. Be killing it just like you just killed that small child. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Oh my god. There's some mousing evidence here, Beltran. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Good? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's, you know, the, okay, you can, sandbag, <laughs> you can sandbag enough, but if you get there is, you put uh, enough sand to where yeah. you're making Let's a uh, complete yeah. sandbox, Dude, then, no. yeah, you gotta, you gotta no, change man. it up a little bit, you know what I mean? <laughs> the game has to end at some point. <laughs> so, fun fact, you can sandbag in the game and you can sandbag out of it, meaning like you can also go Hey, you put up a really good fight. What did you think? Kind of like support them emotionally at the end? Instead of oh, going, yeah. nah, son, you just got smacked. Ah, I dig it. I did how you that feel? Oh, how you feel? You crying? I, I sandbagged one time. One time. Uh-huh. And then this is why you now hear the name Penelope. Uh-huh. The one time I sandbagged. Uh-huh. That is the reason why you hear Penelope. Okay. I was there for the time Penelope built, beat Beltran. It was amazing. Dominated so, Beltran, some would say. Yeah, I saw no Penelope sandbag baggery whatsoever. 
I, I I've been in the background for five years now. There was way more than one time that Ooh. uh that Penelope B. Beltran. Come on now. Oh. You know what? I think my laptop battery's about to die. That's such a shame. How convenient. What a what a shame. Technology these days, you know. I know, man. Bring it back to me real quick. Oh my God! Can we get back to the wedding? I love how Mason's back is laughing. This is where the star power is at. We got, I gotta have Beltran here at all times, so the fake Beltran has to be ready to go. The fake Beltran. Oh. Do you still have that giant sign with, with a face on it? <laughs> uh, one, one of my friends do. He has. <laughs> oh, they do. <laughs> yeah, one of my friends has one. I, the other one ended up at a flea market game store on their wall. Wow. Yeah, and then uh, and I it disappeared after that. I don't know where the third one is, but one of my friends, does, they there was three made. One of my friends has one of them. <laughs> I don't know where the third one went. So yeah, that uh, it's still out there. <laughs> Mystery. I'm just I'm just marking fact, everything that, you that say. That same sir. head made it to a WWE event one time. I saw that picture. It was yeah, one time, it's been out there way more than one time. Well, I mean, yeah, maybe two. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know, man. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. He's Mr. Worldwide, man. All of the worlds. Mm -hmm. Dennis Dennis Casper does. I mean, we were talking about your wedding. <laughs> we were but, talking about then a celebrity wedding. jumped on. And then we had more important things to talk about. A true yeah. celebrity. I mean, weddings happen. But look, again, Google L Trouble and Killer Miller and Super Turbo all in one thing. And what do we see? Michael Chris Beltran. Miller. First page. Yes. Jeez. Holding some awesome shirts, too. Those shirts yeah. are really cool. Celebrity shirt maker. <laughs> yeah, they're awesome. Okay. Still got them. Mm -hmm. We yeah. still those have shirts. them. Thank you for that. Shirts. Like, yeah. Try to wear them. You know, anytime we have a tournament or whatnot, we try to wear them. It's, it's, we have like a special t shirt drawer, like our special Street Fighter shirts, and then all our other ones. You're, you're in a special drawer. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, we, we wore to France. Yeah. Yeah, for one of the days. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, whoa, look, the shirt made it out to France. Yeah, man. And I recall seeing Matsun wearing his too. I was like, whoa. Yeah, they're very they're very proud of those. It's really awesome. Yeah, so, I like it. I still have mine. I'm <laughs> hoping to get a new t shirt maker here soon to finish off some other ones that have been pending for quite some time now. But Ooh, nice. Yeah. I'm excited to see him. Well, I mean mm -hmm. it's for other people that didn't <laughs> didn't get him this time around, so you know. Yeah, but still, you're, I'm sure you're gonna add a little more to it, embellishment. Yeah. <laughs> Tony P they says, "Beltran, where's my shirt?" He's one of them. Uh -huh. <laughs> he's he's one of them. That. Uh huh. We're almost ready, actually. I just need Jerry to uh, grab the graphic and. Oh, it's Jerry's fault. I see. Blame it's the man who keeps fault. this thing going. It's not his fault. He's got other things going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And once I get the graphic, we'll have uh, Josh throw some Tony P magic letters on there, and then. There you go. I'm hitting send to a t another T-shirt supplier. So speaking We're almost of, there. Speaking of other things, uh, you guys probably suspected this, but I run the DJ Terminator Mike B website, the uh, the fan site. I am uh, his uh, volunteer publicist, and uh, <laughs> I I actually have to step away and and field a media inquiry for uh, Michael Beltran. Um, the Dallas Observer wants to do an interview or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, but I, I have to step away for until 6.30 when uh, Dr. Beard gets here. Um, so uh, Ian's going to take over for me. And Mike, can you transition us? Whenever you're done, whenever whenever you're through badgering poor Eugene and Tanya, and thank you so much for, for joining me as, as I have to kind of cut out for a sec for of a course, bit. Guys. Um, happy to be here. But yeah, I'm I'm so so happy that you guys are here, and I I am enjoying this this visit very very greatly. But I do have to to field one of uh, Beltran's media contacts, and then also probably eat breakfast. So I will be back at six thirty. Uh, Mike, fun, you sorry. and e, uh, Ian uh, transition to some Super Turbo um, at some point. Take your time. There's never enough Eugene and Tanya uh, to go around. So. If you guys talk it out as much as you like, but I do need you to take the take the reins for just a sec, and uh, Ian can bring up Super Turbo. It's already on my computer. Cool, cool, Mike. 
Yeah, I mean, I I, I can All right. uh, hang out just for a couple more minutes. I actually have to do some things around here. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Just um. Well, you... Chris. Yes. Thank you for inviting us on this. We appreciate it. Like, really, it it's nice to talk to all of you again. Yes. Thank you. No. Thank you for I... setting up this time and making sure we you know, carved out some space and reconnected with all of you again. Yeah, we miss Thank you guys. You. I haven't, haven't seen you guys since January, which isn't that long ago. But like Nate, I haven't talked to Nate in I don't know how long I haven't seen Nate. So. Yeah, and touch base with you guys again. Yeah, yeah for sure, man. We're out here. We're always, always good friends. You're always friends of free play. Um, we, we, you always have a place to stay here. Um, even now, I could find room for you if you, if you need a place. <laughs> We can drive break. Like anyone's going <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> I know they're not. I know they're not. So it's a bluff. No, no, you you, you always have a place here. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you. Aww. Same yeah. same with you guys. Let All us right. know if you're ever out in Cali. All right, we'll we'll let you go then and then I will Oh wait. Yes? Yes, Mike. I will be I will be in LA next year's WrestleMania, so Ooh. a year from now. I will be in LA for next year's WrestleMania at the new stadium. So Can you let us in on the scoop on who you're fighting there? I'm not wrestling. I'm spectating. <laughs> Damn it. What? Aww. Stocks in WWE just took a plummet as no, they didn't. Mike B <laughs> refuses to take a match. This might be part of his like uh, his, his play, his long game. He's just, he's just it's waiting. It's part of his plot line. You know, yeah, yeah, Bell part of plot. Oh, my God. Wants a better so, contract. So, yeah, if, if anything, they each other between now and then, but. Next year's WrestleMania, yeah, you will see me in LA for for that. So wrestling, sweet, awesome, yeah, 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 definitely hit us up. Oh yeah. Well, I'm, I I will I will come as well, and I won't go to WrestleMania. I'll just go to Don's and keep playing Super Turbo. Done deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, All right. Okay. Thanks, guys. So, uh, I I, I, right, guys, I, I really time. really enjoy enjoyed your visit. Anytime, man. Let us know when you want us to come back for uh, anything, actually. I will take you up on that offer because I can't talk to you guys enough. Thank you so much. <laughs> Same here. Same uh, here, Chris. Have a good night. All right. See you. Bye, guys. Later. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Yes. Yes. I'm listening. What? Yes. Oh, no, no, no. I was talking to you, Eugene. My bad. Hold on. Okay. 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 Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Tanya says do something and I do it. Like, that's just. She doesn't even just need to, to be, break out. Just to be clear, are we. Okay. I think they were, they cut off there. Yeah, I don't I don't know who Tanya was referring to either. So, uh, let's see. Can we get somebody to play some anything? I have Fight Cave pulled up right now. I basically need you guys to 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 buy me an hour so I can. Um, I, I'm on there. It literally is to talk to the media, so it would be helpful to free play. You guys got it. You got it, Ian. Yeah, I can take over. All right, thanks, man. I just man. need somebody to, to play. I think cool, I see cool. Tony P in there. Yeah, someone play Tony P. Let's get it on. All right, I'll see you boys a little bit later. I'll check in later. Mike is confirmed Dark Order. Oh, my. <laughs> all right, then we're going to also head out. It's right. been a day. Thank you all. Thanks for the interview, guys. No, thank you guys. Again, it's you guys are the ones that keep this nasty. Yeah. <laughs>